stupid smile across your face It's comedy time And the gang's all here The girls, the boys and the dog Andrew's in Hillingdon. Andrew, what would you like to say? James, hi Andrew. there. Hello. Um, be reasonable. Have a look around. You're a man of the world. Look in Harrods in some of the stores and so on and the cost of the furniture. It's not cheap. You can spend a, that's a fortune on stuff. Yes, but only, only, if, only if you can afford it. Yeah, oh yeah, I work in properties and they can yeah. afford it and such. No, but and, they, um, the people who buy it can afford it. The people who won't reveal yes. who bought it can't afford it, can they? Well, it hasn't been revealed yet, so don't pursue it are you, are, are, are you, are you, look, forget, forgive me, I promise we'll stay friends, but you, are, are you taking the mickey or are you bringing up in not good faith? All, no, you all. are ringing up in good faith. Oh, yeah, I'm right. in bed in hospital at the moment. I've been hmm. listening to you since your start. Okay, so because it is possible to find £6,000 armchairs, there's nothing wrong with the Prime Minister paying for a £6,000 armchair with money that he won't reveal the source of. That's what you've said to me so that's far, his, I think. Yeah, that's his business, yeah? surely. Okay. I'm sure it'll be revealed who, yeah. who it comes no, about. No, that's, that's fine. Yeah. Why do you think he won't reveal it, then? He's had months. Well, that I didn't know. I didn't you do know now. The place was refurbished. You do now. And he only picked up the bill himself when the stories reached the public about them desperately ringing around donors trying to get them to fill the 60 grand hole in Conservative Party finances that have been caused by the armchairs and wallpaper. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. 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 But, you know... But, but no, yeah, absolutely fine. Nothing to see here. Cheers, James. Cheers, cheers, cheers Andrew. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. Yeah, there you go. That is the sound of a forelock being tugged so hard that the fellow's in danger of falling over. Mike's in where? Why, why do you think so many... Maybe I'm being overly kind again, Mike, but I, I do want to believe otherwise decent people who care about standards switch it off where he's concerned. Well, I think the, the answer to that is that, that you, you, you have the view that, that just because... I know what my view is, mate. T tell me what yeah. yours is. Well, my view is that uh, ex-President Trump was a good man for America, and my opinion is that right. um, Boris Johnson is a good man to lead this country. The fact that he doesn't, you know, that you don't agree with it... No, 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 it's, know, not, it's, it's not a question of agreeing. I'm interested in why you don't care about him chucking a report into bullying in the bin so the independent advisor on the ministerial code resigned. I don't care. I no, don't I know, care I know you it. don't. That's clear, but why not? Well, because on the scale of what's happened in this country in the last year, it's meaningless. Well, I agree That's with why. you, because 150,000 people have died, but apparently you don't care about that either. No, no, I, of course I care about that. And how many of them do you think would have been avoided with stronger leadership? I've got no idea. Well, take no a guess. Idea. Take a guess. No, I, I don't, look, I'm on, I'm on here. You asked me why I agree with, with Boris. No, I didn't. I, I said, why don't Boris? you care about his obvious moral corruption? Because, as I said, on a scale of what's important in our world, it means nothing. It so, isn't let it, wanting the bodies choose, to, wanting the bodies to, to pile up in their thousands, how, how, how is yeah. that not important? Well, did he say that? Yes. Did it been proven? Yes. Oh, he said it? Then yes. Then, you heard him? You well, heard of course him. I didn't hear him, but three people well, then, who well, did... Then how, how do you know that he did? Well, I'll tell you if you stop shouting. Three people who okay. heard it have said that they'd happily swear on oath that they had oh, done, okay. and his own spokes, okay. and his own spokes people are refusing to deny it now. Okay. So why okay. don't you well, care about that? I don't care about it. I know you I don't. don't. That's it's, why you've rung in. So why don't you care proven, about the bloke in charge of pan... Proven. No, Mike, Mike, Mike. Yeah. He okay. said it. Why don't yeah. you care? Because it isn't important. So the man in charge of our pandemic management times. said that he yeah. wanted bodies yeah. to pile up in their thousands, that yeah. he wanted the virus to rip through no. the population, and you don't yeah. think that's important. Just talk me through no. why it's not important. No, I don't want to talk you through why it's not important. Please, can, that, that's literally what the phone is like for. Program. But, well, why not don't you really. Talk about how, why well, don't you talk about well, because because how I don't you want to. I'm interested. From your books. I, I, say why that don't again. You talk about that. Why don't I talk why about what? Why don't you talk about? You couldn't live off the royalties from the sales of your books. So, Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, if you want, Mike. As long as you promise yeah. to answer my question at the end. Explain what yeah. what, what it is you're asking me. No, I'm I'm asking you. Yeah. From the sales of your books. Yeah. Could you live off the royalties? Oh, very comfortably, yes. Okay, okay, good, good. Next question, I'll let well, you do two more, two more questions and then we'll get back to the phoning that everybody else is tuned in for. So go on, okay. anything else? 
Yeah, what I'd like to know is yeah. why you still feel Go when on. over half, arguably, ha- over half of Americans voted for Trump, OK? No. In the last election. No, they didn't. They counted and, that. We, can, we can't argue drubbed, about arithmetic, your drubbed, Mike. Your lot got drubbed my in the rate. referendum. Your lot got drubbed in the general election. Yeah, go on. But you just can't not my, not my lot, mate. Not, with not, you. not my lot, lot in the general election. I, 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 yeah. I was one of Jeremy Corbyn's most cogent critics. But what's the question again? The question was, yeah. why can you not accept that just because someone doesn't agree with your point of view... No, 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 it's not my point of view. Standard. They're My, sub-mental. You're putting words in my mouth, and I don't think sub-mental okay. is actually a word. Well, you, you put words in everyone else's mouth. No, I don't. I give you an opportunity you, to answer the questions that I ask, Mike, and you the question is... Right, you're doing you it again. I've just given you the free space to make your point. Okay. It's, it's not my yeah, fault well, you me, haven't got one. Let me make my point. Good. Let me make my point. Come on, then. So you think that don't, the counting of the votes in the American election was wrong? Yeah. Okay, don't keep insulting so counting, people because Mike. they don't agree with you. It's not a question that's of agreeing. Is there a border in the Irish it Sea? It is. Is there a border in the Irish Sea? I don't care. No, but is I there? All I care about is people's lives, is, okay? Uh, oh, so accusing, then why don't you care about Boris the bloke Johnson, who said he wanted bodies to pile up in their thousands? Because it hasn't been proved that he said it, in despite what you've said. Why won't it they deny it? That he said it? Why won't oh, they deny maybe, it? Maybe they will. But is he important? No, but they won't, and they have. Well, have you, you said you care about people's COVID? lives. Have you lost anybody to COVID if you, in your family? If you care about, you? not in my direct family, no. No, if okay. You, if, if you care about people's lives, how can you be yeah. comfortable with the chap saying he wants it to rip through the population, Mike? Just talk me through it, mate. I don't know what you're so angry about. Well, I'm I'm angry because you're di- deflecting Please answer the question. It's 11.56. The question okay, is, we've spent right. two hours on the same phone-in. You, you'll allow yeah. me to say there's no real excuse yeah. for not understanding what question we're yeah. asking. You say you care because about the, lives and you don't care about the, all the, the other stuff. Of, the no, no, not, not the, the majority, country. Mike. You, let's finish the question, yeah. right? Okay. You don't well, care I, about the I fact... Speak, you don't care about the fact you were lied to. I, well, no, you can okay. speak for the majority, but... You're just but, running time down because you know you're wrong. Yeah, that, you, got, you, you got me do. there, Mike. You, you got, always yeah, do no, it. You got me there. Yeah, OK. All right, but you there's still plenty of time, so... so are you. Okay. How's that? Yeah, that's that's great. That's really that's really stinging. That's really hurt. So the question is, if you care about people's lives, how can you be comfortable with him saying that he wanted the virus to rip through the population, Mike? Just talk because me through it all the time you want. a great job for the country, and you'll see it at the next election. You'll so, see it. He'll get, he'll, he'll get elected by another landslide. 127,000. No, you're not answering the question. You care yeah, about okay. people's lives, but you don't yeah. care about a prime minister wanting the pandemic to rip through the population. Just explain no, the logic no, of that position to me. Twisting, you're twisting words that he may not have said. He never said he wanted the pandemic to rip through. You're just twisting his mind. Well, Mike, what you I'm, always I'm not do. Mike, and I don't, you, you see. Are. That's the... You can't accept it, Sorry, mate. Sorry, Mike, I, what does that mean now? What does it mean? Yes, ba- ba- mean? bearing in mind that there will be people listening who have mental health problems. Why, why do you say yeah. I came off suicide watch? Well, because that was a rumour, I think, that you'd been on suicide watch when Brexit, the Brexit result went against what, you. By rumour, you mean racists on Twitter? No, no, well, where, no, the, where did you hear that rumour, Mike? Where did you hear that rumour? Social rumor, media. Mate? Social media, but not Twitter. Well, OK, so give me some examples, will you? Because I might sue. No, no, no. Why not, Mike? The, Come on, Mike. Clock, Big brave, Mike. Tell up. it like it is, clock, mate. Take yeah. your time. You've still got two minutes. Where did you hear that rumour? On social media. Where? Facebook. Where? Facebook, I just told Whose you. Whose accounts? Well, I don't make a note of people's camp. There was a lot you of You must them. be able to remember something that you're going no, to come out and spew on national radio, trivia. Mike. Come on. It's trivia. It just demonstrates you think it, it You think it's trivia that, 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 you think it's trivia that people, people claimed I was on suicide watch? Views. Come on, Mike. Give me yeah. the source. No. Otherwise, people might said. think you're lying. How few people support your views? Mike, That's you have believed through. somebody posting on Facebook that I was on yeah. Suicide Watch, and you're here to yeah. claim that you've got a yeah. clearer bead on reality than I have. Yeah, well, what, what you may have been, because all your dreams were shattered. But, and they Mike, keep being shattered, you, and Mike, you can't what, accept it. What are you talking about, Mike? Your, your man what? is calling for... Bodies to pile up in their thousands and the virus to rip through the population. And in order to defend your position on national radio, you're reduced yeah. to repeating libelous lies from Facebook accounts that you're too cowardly to name. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you'll, be, you'll probably come out of this grinning and laughing at the next idiot that disagrees with you. You just laughed, it mate. It doesn't make any difference. You just laughed, mate. What's wrong with I know, laughing? Because I, I can laugh at you. That's right. That's why you're but, deluded. But you're laughing at deluded. my description of you as a cowardly yeah. liar. Yeah, because I can. I can. Well, laugh I, I, at I know it you can. It isn't true. I know it you can, but, but why? Because it isn't true. What's That's not why? true? What's not true? That I'm a cowardly liar. Okay, well, you lied about me being on Suicide Watch, and you're yeah, too well, cowardly. You lie, you lie about and you're just too, about everything else. And you're else. too cowardly to tell me where you got that information from. So, if I you add cowardly you, if you to liar, hear, you if get you a cowardly hear, liar. It's up to you. You're a cowardly yeah, okay, liar. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'm a cowardly liar. There we go, Mike. We got, we got there in the end. Alan is in Broxbourne. Alan, who, who, who do you trust? Uh, good morning, James. I've been trying to talk to you for ages. Um, I trust Boris Johnson. Right. I know that surprises you, James. Why, why would that surprise me? <laughs> because, because basically, um, I tried to get through before. I oh. remember the day, I, mean, I know you're going to say, no, this is not the point we're talking about. But when he announced uh, 100,000 deaths, or when your programme announced 100,000 deaths, and I've always wanted to get this point across, because I listen to your show regularly. I'm very I'm grateful. Would, could we just focus on today's yes. phone-in? Would that be OK? I oh, know, but that's, that's the trouble. You always want to just focus on that, and nobody gets this point across. All right, you just say your you, bit, OK? And, you, came and... on, you come on every morning, and you speak, <sighs> keep stating this 130,000 deaths, which you know is not true, James. Right, And I've I... got facts of it. OK. But I have to listen to this every day. And no, you don't, Alan. It's completely optional, this. mate. So, oh, no, so how do I know what I'm saying is not true? Just very briefly, if you would, and then we'll get back to the phone-in with people who, who want to contribute to it. I'm contributing to it, James. No, but no, you're not, Alan. You're pursuing entirely your own... Um, no, uh, Which sorry, is fine. I'm... Just talk me through how, why I'm lying about the, the official death toll. Because my uncle died. Yes. He had three weeks to live. He went into hospital. He was dying. He phoned my dad up the day before and said, Mate, I'm, I'm dying. I've got three weeks. Yes. He went into hospital and he died with COVID. Now, he's a statistic. On his death certificate, it said he died of COVID. Now, I'm that very, very statistic. sorry for your loss. What, why does that make Boris Johnson um, the, the no, one that's telling the truth him, at the moment? It doesn't make him responsible for the, the things that you say every morning, 130,000 deaths. The, these, these, are the official, these are the official figures. I, I mean, you can, you you're welcome them, to use your own, you Alan. Of course I believe them. They're the only really? figures that are... Well, you choose your own number then, if you want to say how many people have died. Well, I've just pointed out a fact to you, James. And, and I'm saying you can choose your own number, Alan. I've got no beef with you on that. What number would you like me to say every day? Well, I'd, I'd like to say there's probably half that figure. OK, so we'll say 63,000 people have died. Yeah. Dominic Cummings says an awful lot of them would still be alive if we'd gone into lockdown sooner and we hadn't flirted with this notional idea of herd immunity. So oh, who sorry, do you it's a believe? Thing, James, isn't it? Who do, no, he you was there that. at the time, Alan. So who do you believe? I believe Boris Johnson. And and why? Because he's the guy that's in charge. He's got a lot of advisors around him, as we know. Yes. He's got the guy. And his that's key got advisor his key advisor is saying that this isn't true. So you can't really say he's got a lot of advisors around him when the most senior one of all is completely contradicting you. Yeah, but we know now there's issues. He's what what issues? He's, out fit. He's, Alan. Well, he, he's obviously been kicked out of Downing Street. Right. So he's got an axe to grind. Okay, and the basis for your faith in Boris Johnson, the, the, the kind of idea that he's no, a trust, he's a stand-up no, guy? Don't get me wrong, James, I'm not a Boris Johnson fan, I'm not a p politician's fan at all. No, but, but the reason why I you think, think Boris Johnson is telling the truth about this, despite recordings of him saying the polar opposite of what he subsequently claimed? Well, you know, James, they don't all tell the truth, we know that. But sometimes you've got to put faith in someone, otherwise you've got no chance. You get right. rid of Boris Johnson, someone else comes in. Okay, someone else Alan. lies to you. I, 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 I'm, I'm glad you got through. I hope you feel that you, you, you've made your point. I'll continue oh, to I work with. I'll continue to work with the only official numbers that are out there, and I'm, I'm sure you can understand why I haven't got the first idea why you're choosing to trust Boris Johnson over Dominic Cummings on the grounds that they're all liars. But you have to they're choose one of them. Have I, have I got exactly. that right? They're yeah, all, they're all liars, but you've got to just choose one. Did you toss a coin? No, no, I'm no? the guy's in charge. Pin on the dog, so tail on the dog. I mean, how did you choose him then and not the other fella? Well, who else are you going to choose? Well, the other fella. Or neither. Those were the, the three, those were the, the three, other... those were, well, he's provided evidence and he says he's got, he's got the 
the receipts. I'm evidence? Just... Well, let's, let's see that evidence. Then. Yeah, let's see that evidence, um, which is why at the moment I lean towards neither of them, Alan. But y y you mind how you go, mate. Clayton is in Hinkley. Clayton, over to you. Hi, James. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I am actually somebody yet to be awakened, so uh, contrary to a lot of your views, I'm afraid. However, what, what, do, what does that picture, mean? What does that mean? <laughs> just, just let me get my point, and then, uh, oh, then right. you understand. Well, I'm so just actually, responding to the words you said. I, I have no issue whatsoever with, with knowledge. I think that's excellent. I don't think many people would really, really have issue with all of that. But my point to your researcher when I first called up was, yeah. um, and I think you should be honest with the listeners, I think if you extrapolate this conversation to, to its, uh, its end game, this is all about reparation. And that's where I do have an issue with it, because I think this country is in enough financial bother as it is, <laughs> number one. But number two, where, where would that stop? Do we go back to the Romans? Do we go back to the Germans with the Jews? So who, term, who would, where, where would it stop? Who would get reparations for the, for the plants in Kew Gardens? Well, I'm, I'm not particularly talking about the plants in Kew well, that's, that's Gardens. That's the, phone you, that's the phone in you've rung up. Yeah, but I'm talking about reparations. And I am as well now, although no one was before. So in the context of Kew Gardens, who, who would be looking for reparations as a result of Kew Gardens publishing more details about where the plants came from? I, I personally don't think anybody would have an issue with, with more knowledge. I just can't see No, you've that. already said that. But You're talking about reparations. So in the context of the plants in Kew Gardens being, displayed, being displayed with more information about where the plants came from, who would use that as a platform to launch a campaign for, for, for reparations? Well, I, I, I honestly believe, if you're being honest with your listeners... That can you just answer my question, is, mate, is Clayton? Can you just answer my question? Where, where does reparations fit into the Kew Gardens proposal? Because if you, if you extrapolate this argument to, the, to its end game, that's where it ends up. And I'm just asking... Just tell me how. I well. can't see that extrapolation, so talk me through it. Well, so, well, tomorrow... Tomorrow, oh, Kew Gardens publishes more detail about where the plants in Kew Gardens came from. Now, if you extrapolate that to its end game, it will end up with reparations. Can you just fill in the gap for me? Well, OK, so, so the, the narrative from, from yourself, and I do listen... And right, I, do I, don't, I know what I think. I want to know what you think. How do we get from Kew Gardens publishing information about where plants came from to, well, repara same, to reparations? Just, just, just pause for a minute. Just pause, pa pause for a moment, OK? Take, take a moment to think about it, and then just take us on the journey from a little sign in Kew Gardens explaining where it came from to your fears that that end game will be reparations, which the country can't afford. So just talk me through the, the stages of that process. Because I, don't, I don't, honestly don't believe, if you're being honest, that, that that is what's behind all of this. I believe that reparation is behind all of this. But you keep saying that. Where, where does Kew because Gardens there's no, there's lead no to reparations? Oh, sorry, James. There's no, there's no phone in. Let's be honest. There's no real interest in somebody publishing a bit of extra knowledge. Nobody's really bothered about that. Oh, oh no. They, mate, I, I promise you people are. People love knowledge and learning. It prevents them from making fools of themselves in public, most obviously. OK. Well, listen... I, I, I am. I'm just waiting for an answer. So, tomorrow, I, 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 Kew Gardens publishes more details about its plants, and by the end of next week, we could be looking at reparations. Just tell me what happens in between those two... I, 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 I've, I've made my point, but could you no, be honest... No, you haven't at all. You just have... Please, have one go at it. How do we get from Kew Gardens signs to reparations? Just talk me through it, please. The because extrapolation. I think, because I think, if you were honest, that's where it would end up. Just how? Well, that's my, that's my belief. Just you how? Disagree, how? But you won't actually disagree. No, but talk me through your reasoning. Well, do you disagree? Well, completely, yes. I think there's absolutely no chance whatsoever of assigning Kew Gardens le leading to reparations. But you do, and I want you to explain how it would happen. But does that stand behind your narrative, whether it comes to stately homes, statues, or Kew Gardens? I, I don't even know what you're talking about now. Well, you, OK, OK. Well, let's, so let's, you, let's, think, I, I, you think that I want to know more about that stately home over there because I'm in favour of slavery reparations. That's your honest belief? Uh, yes, I do. Yes. Oh, mate, we got there in the end. You're hilarious. Mark's in Horsham. Back to the uh, catering question, Mark. What would you like to say? Yeah, hi, James. Thanks for having me on the programme. I am... I'm a, a Remainer, and I thoroughly regret uh, us leaving Europe, and... Um, but... Um, I think that we're in the situation where we just now have to get on with uh, playing the game with the cards we've been dealt with. And that means for all businesses if working locally, which most businesses do, they've got a local market there, they're, 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 they're 
they're providing goods or services to, they have to look to the local labour pool and they have to pay appropriately to recruit. It's a competitive marketplace. But you've seen uh, the the problems here, and it's a well-rehearsed argument. I haven't got a great deal of patience with it, but I've got a great deal more patience as a person than I used to. So I'll run through it with you and and see whether either of us can spot any flaws in what the other person is saying. The, the, The ones you're going to tempt to do the jobs that we're talking about today are currently doing jobs. Yeah. Yeah. So what's going to happen to the jobs they vacate to go and do the jobs that you think need to be made more competitive is point one. Point two is the haulage industry was offering people golden gooses, golden geese, even not long ago. And uh, it's barely touched the sides. The increased wages, the increased offers has barely touched the sides. And we've already had stories of people giving up their work driving bin lorries to go and drive supermarket lorries, which means that last week in some parts of the country, the bins weren't being emptied. No, I, 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 I thoroughly agree with all that. And finally, um, I, you just heard Cleo say that, you know, that there are, and particularly at her end of the sector, there are these are highly paid jobs. These are decent gigs that are prized by people who've grown up countries where hospitality is respected and regarded as a, as a, as a you know, a proper career. We live in a country where, for the domestic population, it isn't. So where are you going to get a 40 grand a year sommelier from by the weekend? Mark. I, I, I think that what you're going to have to do is you're going to be poaching it from someone else's restaurant. That's the reality of it. Yeah. There are going to be businesses. There are going to so be then you're not then wage. you're not filling a gap, are you? You're not you're not alleviating well, a labour shortage by poaching someone else's sommelier. You're just moving well, you're moving the shortage from one restaurant to another. Well, yeah, it, exactly. But the situation is there will be some businesses that will not survive because there isn't the labour to enable them. But to they would to they would survive. survive if we brought back freedom of movement of people. Yes, but then then we have the situation. So when you say we have think, to deal well, with wait, the cards, let me let me just say, let me just say. Of course, of well, course. then you have the situation where we, and as Emily make this uh, point out last night on Newsnight, you have bad employers who will take advantage of people who are coming in from Europe who will settle for for a uh, lower wage. So it's a combination. What then, do you James, think this Europe having... is? I didn't see Newsnight last night. That sounds a, 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 an unlikely intervention from it was Emily. A fantastic, it was a fantastic. What, what do you think yeah, Europe is? is who are all these French people that have to come here to to, to to work for a pittance? The Italian people, the Spanish people, the the, the the Polish people. The most scant economic comparisons between these countries now. The point you make had a a, a, a relevance during that initial accession of the Eastern European countries, yeah, yeah, but it doesn't yeah. anymore. More mark. It's ten years, fifteen years out of date that that argument, and it wasn't particularly good then. And as you know, and I know you're not in this category, it was usually deployed by racists who were lying about having concerns about the working conditions of foreigners, when in fact they just didn't want any foreigners here at all, as became clear during the course of the referendum campaign. So that doesn't work as an argument either. Well, no, I think it does because there are people who are employed on contracts. In, but just, just, just a, go and have a look at the well, yeah, go and have a look at the money that's available. The size of the gaps. You find one Bulgarian uh, Romanian who might be coming here to work for money that you wouldn't be prepared to work for, or, or British people wouldn't be able to work for. You find one example like that, and you, you you somehow extrapolate from that an explanation for the haulage industry, the retail industry, the catering industry, the hospitality industry, all being on their knees. And it is here, right in front of me, as you speak the fashion and homeware chain next has warned it may struggle to deliver its normal service in the run-up to christmas unless the uk government relaxes post-brexit migration restrictions to allow more workers into the country I- i'm afraid for me at least the idea that this situation has been caused by low paid your I mean, it was rejected by the bank of england god forbid and i did begin this hour by urging everybody to stop thinking that I mean, in that case, it would have been Mark Carney or the or the Bank of England were, were somehow an equal and opposite force to Andrew Bridgen or Mark Francois. If you want to understand the economy, talk to the best economists you can find. Maybe don't get Andrew Bridgen on the phone. James is in High Wycombe. James, what would you like to say? Yeah, th- James, I think it is remarkable that he was interviewed on primetime. Um, no one has really heard of this guy before the vote and obviously the general election. Um, and I have to say, I think it's kind of somewhat falsely... He, he, ran, he, 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 ran, vote leave. he ran vote leave. I, I mean, they, they, by no means should you have heard of him, but I think almost everybody who pays attention had. They have, and they, they've probably not really heard of Will Straw. 
but they probably heard of Lord Mandelson, who, who obviously was a bit conflicted in his involvement in whether we should remain in the EU. And of course, we're still paying his pension now. Yeah, but, but no, just no, steer no, you no, back no, to the conversations that we're, that we're having. Device today. Figure, James. Yeah. He, he really has. And, um, and I think it's, you know, the shame really, uh, as, a, as a lead voter myself, is that, again, it's falsely attributed that anyone would have been swayed solely by a poster or a Facebook ad. There's no evidence that people even saw these things or reacted to them. No, there it's, it's there is. There's, there's evidence that tens of millions of people did. That's, otherwise, they wouldn't have paid all, all that money again, for them. But let's not, let's not, re, let's not, re, let's let's not re-litigate that. Do, do you well, we think... Are, though, we? Well, no, you're, we're not. We're talking about last night's interview. Anyone that still believes in Brexit listening to Cummings. But, yes. you know, we have to look at how the Remain camp drove people as well right. with a poor argument. And I'm sure we will one day. But at the moment, we're talking... James, we're talking about last night's interview with Dominic Cummings. Cummings and his it's portrayal. All tied to Brexit, James. And you his, know that, and well, you make you make it tied to Brexit too. You're very effective, but you've anchored a false logic today. Oh, Who okay. doesn't hate more Brexit voters or Boris? Yes, but I, mean, I, I also said that's, that's not that's option? not the Probably. question. That's not the question that I want people to focus on. The question I want them to focus on is whether or not Boris Johnson's key advisor, his most trusted consigliere, the man who I think everybody agrees put him in Downing Street, thinks he's completely unfit for purpose. That that is I, I, that's of sort of historical significance, James. And I'm intrigued by why you. I mean, I, perhaps I've misunderstood you. Are you trying to persuade yourself that it's not of historical significance? No, I, I think everything that's happening right now is of historical significance. Yeah, but we're, we're just talking about being this one. Further, isn't it? Okay, um, so we're not know, we're not going to engage, are we? I can tell you're not going to engage on the question of how you feel about putting a man into Downing Street that the architect of his campaign thinks is absolutely. Unbelievably I, I didn't vote for power. Boris Johnson. I'm actually a Leave voter and I voted for, for the, the gentleman from Beaconsfield who was one of the lead pro EU people because right. not all of us are so tribal, James. Uh, okay, but we're so talking engage, about again, absolutely. we're off we're off again, aren't we? I, I I don't know I mean maybe you were on hold, were you, when we played out all of that clip and, and established no, I, I did listen in, James. why it I is so I, But I, you I you're ringing in to say this isn't this isn't important. Is, are What's you? happening at the moment is, is remarkable. I think right. Boris and his team are not in control of the, the optics of the situation. Yes. But I also think everyone just needs to take a breath. All the language at the moment is always very politically aggressive. You know, words like vile or outrageous or yes. unfathomable. And it's just... I don't let's, think unfathomable is aggressive, is it? Well, it is aggressive. We went from a period of being quite apathetic politically as a country, okay, so didn't we? To, to be fair, being almost the vomit that woke us up. You well, know? It's, okay, it's well, bizarre. let's not use aggressive language and then you reach immediately for vomit. <laughs> well, of course, I, I do think it's been that reaction. I think that you know, well, you ultimately, know, pr practice what, what you preach. So, what, what we're hearing a lot now, and I, I'm, I'm not. I think vomit's an aggressive word, James, is it really? Well, it's more it's aggressive than unfathomable, James, but I can see why you'd rather debate semantics yeah, than that's reality. Yeah, for sure. Um, here's the thing people who voted Leave are watching Dominic Cummings, who delivered it, either cover himself in. Uh, well, whatever word you want to use, shame, I suppose, or Boris Johnson in shame. You've got to pick one or the other. They're the two deliverers of, of the Brexit result. So everybody who voted for it is desperately just, reaching. Just speaking personally, well, I haven't finished I speaking yet. I, 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 haven't, I haven't finished things. speaking yet. Okay. And so you're reaching desperately for some way to avoid that feeling of shame that you now have because the two people that sold it to you oh, are in a, that's, in a that's circular a firing surgeon. squad. Say someone feels shame about Brexit. That's your that's your prejudice. No, no, no. I, 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 no, no, no. I said, I said you were desperate to avoid feeling shame about Brexit. I do, but I don't feel shame about it, James. Well, that, James, is unfathomable. Michael is in Dagenham. Michael, what do you reckon? Right, well, let's start with the uh, closure of the borders between Pakistan and um, uh, basically not India. That's all political. We're not doing any favours with them. We don't really negotiate very well with them. They're not interesting to us. Sorry, who? They're expendable. Who? So that's the way the political classes think. Okay? I don't, you've lot, you, I, hang on, who, who are you talking about? Which countries? Do we not do Ours, the, our government, our, our, our corrupt government and our corrupt opposition, they're all corrupt. They're right. all the same thing. Okay? So No, I don't I, I don't want to sound uncomfortable. I don't really know what you're telling me. Okay. So the thing is, it would have made no difference if we closed down the, the, the uh, corridors between India and the United Kingdom. Why not? Right? Well, this variant's been out for quite a long time already. It's a lot longer than they've been saying. Oh, we'll okay? see. Right. And people are traveling, people are traveling everywhere, everywhere, you know? And on top of that, if I close down the corridor between India, it doesn't stop an Indian from getting on a flight to another country and then coming to me. 
No, but it makes it a lot yeah. harder, Michael. So it means Not that the numbers... Really. Well, yes, really. And it means that the numbers coming in would be massively reduced. Yes, but it only takes one to spread an infection. Well, it, yeah, but if you've, got, if you've got ten, then well, it no, spreads no, no, a lot this, further this, and this, faster, this, Michael. No, no, this is, this, this is the problem. I know. This is the problem. I know. Because, like... Um, well, look, here's the bloke, I'll tell you what, here's, here's, whoa, 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 here's the bloke from Sage, here's the, here's, here's the bloke from Sage, again, Sir Paul Ross, Moss, with an M, have a listen to I this and then tell me what he's got wrong, yeah? I think we're probably going to see a compromise of the Prime Minister later on. It's quite unfortunate, it's all about this new Delta variant. If we hadn't had that, I'm sure we'd be locking down much more. It's it's easing off, thing. I think, perhaps you mean, Professor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. using off much more. So, so, go on. Michael? The first problem, OK? What? Like, let's start with the first problem. Oh, OK, well, right? let's not. Uh, let's start with Jermaine, who's in Vauxhall. Jermaine, what would you like to say? Um, I just, I don't think it should be mandatory. I think um, as an NHS uh, member of staff, we, we've done 18 months of, of hard graft keeping the country alive following all of the guidelines of how to avoid spreading it, being very good with sanitising and wearing masks, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the, the rates did go down. Um, all of a sudden now we're being bullied into this situation where we're already on really low pay. A lot of the people on the team already are considering their positions with the 1% pay rise of yes. people worked out to like five pence, do you know what I mean? And it feels like we're not even on good rates. And do you know, we, we, oddly, going... the, the, as, as I understand it, and I'm open to correction on this, but the take-up rate diminishes the further down the pay grade you go. So so the less qualified, less well-paid members of staff are the most likely not to be vaccinated. So, well, because, yeah, we, we, you feel like you're, you're being forced to put things in your body for, for roughly less than £10 an hour, a lot of people. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, but it's medicine. Think is, of it as medicine. Fair, uh, fair enough, but you've gone through 18 months of keeping everybody alive. And you didn't even get a furlough where people. Which, had if we'd had a vaccine from, if we'd had a time. vaccine from the beginning, then you wouldn't have needed to do oh, but that. But even with the vaccine, you're still liable to spread the virus. That's giving you a full sense you're of security. You're considerably with less. Mask, you're considerably with, with, with less testing, liable to spread. You're considerably. Hey, hey, do you mean let's not talk sorry. over each other, mate? You're, you're sorry, but the point I about the va- no. Okay, well, let's carry on talking over each other then. No, no, I don't want to talk Good. over you. Good. The point about the vaccine, and and I don't understand why this line has got traction uh, it, nobody ever uh, as far as i'm aware and certainly not in the last six months has claimed that it is 100 percent effective like i understand a, that well hang on so the the, the vaccinated people are much much, if, much much less likely a to catch it and b to pass it on if they end but up majority, catching it so no don't, stop please stop because this argument is so irresponsible, especially for a healthcare worker. You don't understand no, why vaccines. I'm, I'm not saying they. What I'm trying to say is that it should still be a person's choice. What no, they of put course, into but their body. the reasons you're giving for your position are important to examine, Jermaine. It's the least I can do is respect the reasons that you give, and and, and yeah. so far the reasons you've given are silly. Because the the idea that because it's not 100 percent perfect, so you wouldn't wear a seatbelt because people wearing seatbelts still get killed well, in cars. No, that's not the only reason. The thing is, it's not 100. Right, give me some more reasons then. It was granted under emergency. Oh, here we go. Right? No, you see. Now you're saying, uh, okay, now you're so where, 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 boosters where, as well, right? Where, where, so where, yes, gonna, again. Where does it stop? We uh, have to have boosters as a mandatory, and if the, okay, if the so staff at NHS again, have to again, have it, Jermaine, why not everyone again. Well, I, I can see that. I, I, I like the idea. If every MP had to have it, would you feel more relaxed? I think if it was mandatory for the nation, then fair enough. If it's just like sectors of companies... Well, let's pick like on that, MPs. I, I mean, fair. let's just pick on MPs. You know the reason why the NHS... Well, you must know the reason why the yeah, NHS... it makes sense to an extent, obviously. What do you mean to an extent? I mean, it's, it's the yeah, same reason... obviously there's always going to be some people... So if all, if all, MPs, if all MPs had to have it, would you feel better? I think it would it would go a long way to reassuring some of the public, especially with the... the, the, the I don't, I don't care about anyone except people. you for the purposes of this conversation. I'm interested well, in you. Personally, I've already had one of the jabs, and I'll be honest with you, I had really horrible... Same, yeah. I, was really out, I, I felt groggy for a week, but it's a hell of a lot yeah, better than being like intubated. You, you, you know it's a hell of a lot better than being intubated. Yeah, yeah. So I had I had my jobs personally. Do you know what I mean? But I, so I who are you talking about here then? Who are you in talking? In general, 
I don't think anybody should be forced to do anything they don't want to do. I think it should be a freedom of choice. Yeah, but, but we are forced to do things we don't want to do every day, aren't we? We're, yes, we're, we're forced not to... We're, we're not allowed to drink and drive. We're not allowed to drive without safety belts. We're, we're not allowed to play chicken yeah, in the middle of the M40. We're, we're, we're not allowed to drink... We're not allowed to give our children bleach to drink. I mean, there's millions yeah, of things we're not allowed to do. If you start giving people medicines under emergency powers all the time, before you know it, every five minutes they could just but be saying you have to Nothing is happening under emergency powers. The, 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 well, initially, that's how it was released. No, no, the, no. again, this, these are just sort of, forgive me, mate, these are phrases that you've heard and you haven't... Can I ask what you do in the NHS? I'm just a maintenance guy, I'm not a doctor. Okay, but you, you could speak to some doctors, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. I, Why I've don't you just do them. that? I have, and I tell you what, yeah, at the beginning it was very scary because some doctors was like, don't take the AstraZeneca, it's causing blood clots in, in yeah, people with were, ethnic minorities, take the Pfizer, duh, duh, duh. that caused a lot of apprehension. It wasn't just the internet. People were getting these rumors from doctors, you know what I mean? Some no, but they, they, were, but they, they weren't, doctors. Jermaine. There, there, there weren't any doctors in your hospital telling you not to take the not AstraZeneca vaccine. Not in hospital, there were doctors which were scared somewhat. No, they were not, though. You see, you're, you're making it sound as if you had this conversation at work and you didn't. I didn't. No. Are you sure? Yes. I had this. I had this conversation numerous occasions in the first year because okay. everybody was concerned. Mate, Google there was there was no there, there was no vaccine. They were, they were talking about there was, was no vaccine, vaccine in the first year, Jermaine. Well, the second year, then, but well, you see, I did so. It's I, I hate having to do this to you. You, you. I know that what you're saying isn't true. I don't understand why you want to say it out loud, and then you end up pretending you were having a conversation about an AstraZeneca vaccine before it even existed. And I don't understand it, but I'm grateful to you for all the work you do in the NHS. Speak to the people in the front line. Ask them what they think about these lines that you're being fed, about emergency powers or about whatever the, the, the rest of it may be. Just go, you're so lucky you, could, you can speak to these people. Excuse me, I wonder if I could just have a word with you. I, I see you've been on the intensive care ward today. How, how do you feel about the idea that, that vaccines are X, Y, and Z? And then you can repeat whatever it is that you've heard. That's all. I, I, that, that is it. I, I don't know whether this would extend to maintenance workers. I, I suspect most people listening are a little bit confused about why it's even controversial. It's the NHS. <laughs> Get vaccinated. So the pressure is on you, Simon, in Seven Oaks. Can you answer it? No, probably not, James, but... Oh. Um, well, have a I, go. I, go I, on. I, I know what I, what I voted for. I voted for independence. I voted for sovereignty. I, I voted for accountability of the politicians who make the can we? Can I just steer you back to the fish? Would you mind? Yeah, but this is the whole point, isn't it? It's about the fish. Yes. Because... So what, what, how have the fishermen ended up being no, so angry? No, if I can finish, James. Well, no, mate, we've got to, we've got to be having a, the same conversation. Is that <laughs> I believe yes. that my politicians should dictate what trawlers catch what fish in our waters. Right. Okay? And so do you understand... Is that all fair? Do you is understand, that all reasonable? Do you understand why that was impossible now? Why is it impossible? Because... I don't understand why it's impossible. Because the massive majority of the fish that we eat is caught by foreign fleets. Yeah, because um, because of our EU membership of the Common Fisheries Policy, our, N our no, fishing no, no, fleet no. was decimated over the last 30 years. Right. Wasn't let, it? Let, let me try again, OK? Why do you think the National Federation of Fishermen's Organisations is so furious? Um, because... There's increased bureaucracy, there's increased paperwork, because the European Union are smarting and they're, they're finding it difficult to accept common terms no, for accepting our pe fish that they used to accept okay, before. Okay, so, no, the, the point is the paperwork is for people that aren't members of the single market or the customs union. And, and yeah, and we're not members of the single market or the customs union, so correct. we're so, so the paperwork, state, are we the, not? The paperwork is an inevitable consequence of leaving the European Union. Uh, yeah, but fair enough. There's got to be parity on quality, surely. We start but, from a level playing field. But, but these words don't why, mean why, anything. Why is, why is it differentiated over, over the course of one day? Yes. Why is it so different? Because now, if you were to resign why, your membership of a club today tomorrow your relationship with that club would be very different do you see that Simon? yeah i totally see right, that so that's However, the answer to your question about one day no uh, but when we have the same standards james yes why are they refusing to accept a consumable good that they want to eat 
they want to buy. Because why, frictionless why trade. Are access some, to I, I, I don't know if these questions are rhetorical. I can answer all of these questions, but but the answer is essentially well, the same. Them, then. Okay, so the benefits of membership are confined to members. Um, yeah, but we've got parity. <sighs> With, with the members, haven't we? No, we are not members. You can only no, have parity have with a member. We have equal if, well, standards with, with, what, once with again, the Simon, I can not. help. I can help you to understand all this if you genuinely want to. If you want to keep well, saying, then explain, James. Okay. I mean, because our I, standards are exactly the same as theirs. And in fact, our environmental standards are far okay. higher than those of the European Union. So the benefits of membership with regard to trade are confined to members. We are no longer a member, so the benefit no, of friction... Okay, you carry on, Simon. So, so where oh. is the equivalence? The equivalence, the equal recognition that should be there? Should, should so you, you thought, just to be clear, because I, I, I'm, I'm trying to I'm genuinely trying to help you, although I'm increasingly worrying that, that you're not genuinely in, in seek of help in understanding all this don't, stuff. Don't, don't be offensive, James. Just tell I'm me not. like it is, mate. I, well, I, I have done several times, and uh, it, it's well, fair no, to say that I, I haven't buttered many parsnips yet, but on we go, onwards and upwards, Simon. Right, so, so you thought that when we left the European Union, nothing would change? No, no, I didn't think so that. So what, what did you think I thought, then? I thought, with with I regard to the fishing industry? With the I thought a lot would change. What, what were you I, expecting? I, no, but what I thought that was we'd have a fair deal in accordance with European law in the... No, but have, we had to make our own laws. Have, no, we'd have the same standards oh, in that same. they'd accept the standards... That we already that already right. exist that we already so what's know, gone wrong yes? do you think what's I thought those, I, thought those, those I know those how she feels I really do is that uh, what, what what do you think's gone wrong I, I I I think there's a lot of frustration and there's a lot of pride on both sides yeah what do you think's gone wrong what 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 has gone that's wrong just for the benefit of listeners that's not my head on the desk that's something in the background where simon um, is so what no what, that's my autistic son what do you think's gone wrong well i'll tell you what mate you go and look after him simon mate and i, and I wish you all the very best seriously walter is in warrington walter what would you like to say oh hey james good to speak to you today Likewise. um my um uh, so i'm, I'm a uh, i probably spoke with your research i'm a pastor of a church in oh, yeah. uh, in, in warrington um so we, we, we've all heard the stories of the, the gay conversion therapy of... Uh, well, Damien hasn't. Well, Damien <laughs> hasn't, but I'll take well, your well, point. <laughs> yeah, I think most people, um, I, well, I presume it anyway, normally. Um, but you hear the stories of electric shock therapy, even yeah. even I read stories of even fathers attacking their daughters who came right. out as, um, as gay. Right. Uh, and you hear all these sorts of stories. Um, and obviously, I, I, I don't agree with that. I don't think that's right. I think that's that sort of thing is, is just abhorrent and just completely wrong. As most, uh, I suppose, most, well, you say most people. Um, but if uh, a consenting adult, I know that's the term that's been used, and I know that the, the, the conversation is more towards uh, originally the question was about the legal side of things. Yes. Um, if uh, a consenting adult came to me as a pastor and explained that he had, or he or she had same sex um, desires or feelings, whatever word, sort of way you want to put, say it or whatever. Yes. Um, and I can't see that how me praying for them to help them overcome that, or again, however what you want to word that, is the same as doing the other sort of things that was mentioned. Okay. Um, then you sort of out, like you say, you're, you're questioning. Well, I'm 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 beginning on the premise that, that homosexuality is akin to an illness, which is part no, of No, no, definitely not akin problem. to an illness. How hard would I have to pray to make you gay? <laughs> No, I understand the, 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 no, that, so I, I'm that, going to insist that, that you answer that question. How hard would I have to pray to make you gay? I don't believe it's about how hard anyone has to pray for anything. Well, all right. How often would I have to pray? How, 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 how likely is it that I could pray you gay? From, from, from my honest point of view, from yeah. my, honest, my yeah. honest belief, I don't believe it's possible. So how can you pray someone straight? Because well, this is how I, if if I can, I'll answer that. So this is how I would I would I would view it again from from my point of view from my just just so uh, you know, I, 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 if I'm not satisfied with your answer, I will just ask you that same question again when you finish talking. <laughs> just no so problem. you know. So, All right. so the question so is, we, how can you pray someone gay if you can't pray someone straight? So we believe I believe that just as I would pray for somebody who is in a uh, not same sex desire, but in um, 
So and it, and it, you've got a straight, a straight relationship. So somebody that have, has those desires towards that same that person of the opposite sex, that I would pray, we would pray together if they came to me and said that they're having these feelings and they don't want them because they want to save themselves to a marriage or etc. Yeah, it's the same as saying. For me, it's the same as saying that about somebody that says they're gay. So it's not that being gay is worse or being gay is is the worst thing that anybody could do or the worst act that anybody could do. No, because they'd still be gay. Yeah, of course they'd still be gay. So you're just you're just going to try and get them to not have a sex life? No, 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 definitely not. I wouldn't try and get them. What what then? So what are you praying? What are you praying for then? With 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 the gay with the gay person. Yes, yes. If they if they have come to me, so it's not something as a first start. It's not something I would go to them and say, "You're wrong. I need to pray about this. Let me pray for you." Yeah. If they've come to me, but like neither Lord, are you like going to say there. when they come to you, say, "Well, don't be silly. There's nothing to pray for. Just just go. You know, I, I hope you find someone to love." You're no, not. No, you're going to say, "I'm no, going to no, I'm going to help you that. fight your natural feelings." No, I wouldn't say that. No, definitely not. I'm honest. That's I'm what honest you'd be person. doing. No, honest, That's what you'd be doing. I'm honest, uh, honest, honest person on that one, and I wouldn't say to them, "Yeah, you know." Do, do as you wish. If they've come to me and they've asked me, so in other will, words, if they if they've been that. inculcated into homophobic thinking or they're victims of, of of a culture that preaches against homosexuality, they come to you because they don't want to be homosexual or they don't want to do homosexual acts or have homosexual feelings. You're like, uh, 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 I mean, you're, you're basically the drug dealer, aren't you? <laughs> and like I said, when I started originally, it's not about so much just about. Yeah, but I'm uh, going to do that it, thing it, I told it, you I was going to do. If you can't pray yourself, yeah. if I can't pray you gay, how can you pray someone else straight? No, it's not about me praying. It's like they've come and asked. So if they want that... Cause yeah, but then you, as, you, you as, a, as a good citizen, never mind as a man of God, you should be telling them that they've got nothing to be ashamed of and that their feelings are natural and beautiful and God's will. Again, obviously, it depends on the uh, on, on the uh, no, on the no, stance of on the scriptures, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. It's on the scriptures. Of the, Are we going to do this? You want to go there? I want to? <laughs> do you want to go? Okay. What did Jesus say about sexuality? Uh, Jesus didn't. But we, if, I, if you believe all scripture is, is God breathed, no, no, I want to know what Jesus it's said. Just as much. I want to know what Jesus said. Gay or straight, he never said any. Didn't say he a actually, word about it, did he? He actually did say one thing. No, he didn't. He did, if I can say it. Well, you let me. Well, yeah, go on. He said, "This is this is this is why a man must leave his house, his family, and be united to his wife, and that's the way that God created them." No, he that's didn't. what Jesus says. No, he, he did. Didn't. So he's talking about marriage in the Book of Matthew. Yeah. All right. So what did he say about sexuality? I was just saying that a man and a woman. To, no, what to be did married. he say about homosexuality? Homosexuality? No, he never said a word about homosexuality. Not a sausage. So when someone comes to you and tells you that they're gay. Tell them they've got nothing to be ashamed of, and it's God's will. And that if there was anything but, but, wrong with it, God wouldn't have made us like this. But like I say, if, if they've come oh, to you come and said on, that mate. they want you to pray God, about no, that, no, 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 no. You've created a culture in which they don't want to be gay. You preach that there's something wrong with it, and then you think you get a free pass on being a good guy when they come to you and ask for help in resisting their natural urges. Yeah, because if you believe in the entirety of the Bible, oh, the entire f- Bible. Oh, okay. You believe in the entirety of the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What are you wearing? Okay. What are you wearing at the moment? Uh, a woolen jumper and a pair of jeans. What are the jeans made of? Uh, probably cotton, I think. So you're wearing wool and that. cotton at the same time, which Leviticus calls an abomination. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's, that's cultural law, not that's ceremonial law. Cultural law. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Where do you stand on shellfish? Again, it's cultural law. Oh, I see. Not so, so those laws are Everything not. You don't live. You don't abide by the full content of the scriptures when you're doing it. But when it's stuff you don't want to do, then it's really important. No, because I'm, that's not that's not what I'm saying at all. It, I'm just oh, saying oh that they, it totally is. No, it's not because oh, different okay. things apply in oh, different okay. ways. Okay, like, right. Yeah. Prophets, wisdom, knowledge, sort of thing. Everything yeah. in, in flies in different ways. Do you even but believe this, or do you just need to pay the bills? No, I, I don't get paid for being a pastor. Good grief! So you do this for fun or power? Uh, so, no, no, definitely power. Not. Standing definitely in the not. community, right? Sort of thing you have that's to what you. That's it. what you get out of it. It's vanity. But that's my, being origi- fed my original point wasn't about that. Any of that, anyway. Your original, original point was that if someone all. comes to you and asks for help in not being gay, you're going to pray with them and punt the lie that something might come good at the end of it. And the idea that well, you can no, pray. No, it, was, it was about the law. Ah, Walter, well, mate, you're, it was you're, about the you're law. a disgrace. And the law can't. You're a disgrace. Prayer, certain you're prayers, certain prayers wrong, certain prayers right. You know it as well. I can hear it in your voice. I can hear the desperation. In your voice. No, if it calls certain prayers wrong and certain prayers right, when does it stop? Do you know That's what I'm going to do, Walter? I, I, I'm going to pray for you, but my God, I'm going to pray for the people you corrupt as well. Stuart's in Kuala Lumpur. Stuart, how's the Labour, yeah, Bar- yeah. How's the Labour Party doing in Malaysia? <laughs> <laughs> Probably better than the UK, to be fair. Um, Go on. 
So, I think my point is, is that what Jeremy Corbyn was doing oh. is probably going to be the future of the Labour Party. Maybe not now, but given, you know, a generation, 20, 30 years, with the changing demographics of the Tory party, I suppose the thing that they're an ageing voter, they're not going to be around for a lot longer. And this surge in the youth of um, social... Um, the social democratic ideal. I think it's almost but, inevitable that but, it's actually so, going to happen. But again, I, I, I appreciate it's your show as much as mine, and, and it's a little naive of me to want to have a conversation that perhaps doesn't immediately hark back to, to the last leader. Something about the combination of politics and radio phone-ins probably mm -hmm. makes it inevitable. But you're saying that the you're saying that the worst but, electoral <sighs> defeat in living memory should be the blueprint for the future of the Labour Party. <laughs> But I think, like you said... Just just focus on ago, what I've just asked you. Just focus, That is what you've rung in to say, all the way from Kuala Lumpur. The worst electoral so defeat I, since 1935 has to be the roadmap ahead for Keir Starmer. Uh, maybe not for Keir Starmer, no. I think right, for the Labour Party, then. Keep, uh, for the Labour Party, I think it is. But as I said... But I just, just think, listen to my words. <laughs> the worst electoral defeat since 1935, that's definitely what we need more of. As you said a few <laughs> moments ago, it's got something to do with the salesman of it. I yeah, think. okay. Corbyn was not a good salesman of this ideal, but I think somebody who can sell it. Well, what ideal? To sorry to badge, people, sorry to badge you, but I want substance because yeah. what, what? What? I mean, has Starmer abandoned much of that policy platform? I, I mean, what would you point at as the thing that <sighs> is a brilliant product but just needs a better salesman? I think he's, he's always been in a very, very difficult situation. Following on from Corbyn, he's always going to be in an incredibly difficult situation. I mean, to be fair, he got a lot of young people involved in that vote, a huge amount. Does he have the power to do that? I don't think... But you I haven't, I mean, with respect, I'm asking for detail and substance, and, and you haven't got any, which is absolutely fine and very emblematic of the broader political picture, but you haven't got anything. Some, <laughs> something that Starmer has abandoned, for example, that, that, that Corbyn promoted. Have you got that at your fingertips? I mean, to be fair, this is coming from a staunch Conservative. You probably, probably I don't care. I'm asking you a question. I mean, certainly... certainly so, 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 so a staunch Conservative rings in and says what the Labour Party needs to do is stick with the model that led them to the worst electoral defeat since 1935. I think, I, I, and I suddenly think the clouds clear, Stuart. You should have been a little bit more honest with my listeners from the beginning. Paul is in Oxford. Paul, what would you like to say? Uh, morning, James. Hello, um, I would like to hear the Queen say that my government will abolish all hereditary peerage and reduce the... House of Lords to an elected chamber of 200, thereby saving approximately £600 million, some of which could be put towards uh, an old people's home, because most of them in there are senile anyway. I, I, what, you mean in the House of Lords then? then because that was a bit yeah. unnecessary. It, it sort of undermined your, 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 your original point, but no, no matter. Um, why, of all the things that you could have chosen... Does that one rise to the top? Why do you consider that to be the most important legislative ambition? Over, over the last 12 months or so, yeah. particularly with the Brexit debacle, <laughs> we had the House of Lords interfering time and time again into areas that they should not interfere with, from my point of view. OK. Um, can, you, can you name your favourite? Like the, the 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 key area that they interfere. I thought the House of Lords had done quite a good job on on checking the legislation from the House of Commons, and of well, course when when they, when they went to to stop in the proroguing of Parliament. Yeah. So you were in favour of the proroguing of Parliament. Yes. But it was unlawful. Well, that was judges. Yes, but and and, if, and they lied. Been, they lied to the Queen. Been, if there hadn't have been a House of Lords there to go to. Right. It wouldn't have existed. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened. Oh, I see. So you want to get rid of the House of Lords because it, it, it stops the House of Commons from breaking the law. That's it quite a take there, Paul. No, mate, I mean, fair play to you. I, should we get rid of the police as well? They wouldn't have been allowed to take it as a matter of law. I know, the and, and you Lords. wouldn't. they wouldn't be allowed to be arrested for, for, for mugging people if we didn't have a police service. Which is also unelected. No, so should no, we no, get, the let's law. get rid of them as because it's laws you don't like, not lords. No, no, it's the laws that. No, are... it's the law that you don't like, not the lords. 
the law, the, the law, the, the laws, the, the House of Lords. Don't like the laws, so we have to get rid of the Lords because they uphold the laws, and you want the government in the Commons to be free to break the laws and no, to lie to the Queen. You, you. And then we'll get right back to you after talking to Terry in Orpington. Terry, what's on your mind? Hi, good morning, James. Um, it's good that you're talking about this. It, it's a really important debate. Mm. It's probably not going to be resolved this morning. How dare you? But I, I think what. <laughs> Um, what you're suggesting is quite a dangerous route to go down. And the, the reason for that is, I think, that as individual human beings, we, we have a basic right to choose what goes into our body, what other people put into our body, and what we, you know, what we do with our body. Yes. And, and I and, think that, and... is, that is a fundamental right. And if other people, i.e. the government or workplace or whatever start telling us um, that this, I'm sorry, we're going to have to impose this on your body because this no, is... But no, no, one, no one's saying that. You can, you, can, you can swerve the vaccine if you want, but don't bother coming back to work. Yeah, but if workplaces start saying you can only work... They're not, work they're not compromising you... your freedom to, to refuse medicine. No, but, but if workplaces start saying... You can only work for us if you've had the jab. Yeah. Where's that going to end? You could get... Well, it's going to end with workplaces saying, saying that you can only work for us if you've had the jab. Yeah, but what... Suppose the no, that's where it's going to end, Terry. Where, what about supermarkets? If they start saying you can only shop here... Well, then, in, then, then, we'd have a, of, then we'd have a conversation about that. But if ifs and buts or pots and pans... No, it's not, the, it's not the same thing at all. Because, I mean, for a start, the contract between... A shopkeeper and a customer is very different from the contract between a shopkeeper and a shop worker. But but the but it's the same. No, no, no. It really isn't. It doesn't become. It doesn't become the same principle if you keep saying it. It, 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 it if you the management can reserve the right to refuse admission to anyone they want. We've all seen that above the door in a pub, haven't we? Okay. Okay. Are we talking about private businesses? No, we're, talk we're not talking about anything, Terry, ex except the employer having the right to say, don't come to work unless you've had a vaccine. Well, suppose the NHS And you're talking about that. something very different. Yeah, but stop saying suppose. The NHS said that. If, yeah, if, that, that, if, this, if this comes in, if more and more private employees... Uh, mate, I, if, the, if the NHS said you can't come to work unless you've been vaccinated, I, I, I would lead the applause for them every night of the flipping week, yeah. never mind just Thursdays. You want people should, working in the NHS who should, are infectious. But should that be mandatory to yes. all, for all for all nurses. Well, of course it should. Well, if it if it if it does become mandatory, I agree with you, James. It is the, it is the best thing to do. But people should be persuaded. Okay, let's turn it the other way around. I, I understand your reservations. Do people you think? Do you think that a child whose parents have religious beliefs about blood yeah. transfusions should be prevented from having a blood transfusion if it was going to save their life? No, but it should be offered to them. But if they no, but refuse, well, then, then that's you, where we you disagree. Can't force them to. Yes, you because can't for, because you can. For, you, no, 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 them. you can force them to, and we have forced them to. We, I, I mean, the, the courts have forced them to in the past, and parents do not have a right to refuse blood transfusions for their children, whatever their religious beliefs might be. For so, themselves. so there we are. Yeah, I suppose you could refuse himself. it. You could refuse it for yourself. Uh, we, we see the state there stepping in as in loco parentis, but a blood transfusion is going to save your life. A vaccine potentially is going to protect everybody else. That's the point of of society. So I, I understand what you're saying. I don't buy it as a big enough objection. And and the, the, when you have to reach for well, if we do this today, we might not be able to go to Tesco's tomorrow. I, I just remind you, we're only talking about today. It's complicated enough without bringing in theoretical examples or theoretical um, exacerbations. Uh, Rob is in Bracknell. Rob, what do you think? Hi, James. Uh, very nervous, so don't, bear don't with me. Don't be, mate. Um, so, basically, I don't think she should be allowed in, uh, so allowed okay. back. Um, I'll tell you why. Three, four, five years down the line, um, there's another terrible bombing. Um, her name pops up, and it's too late. So, and we knew about her. That, that's, so yes, I, no, I understand that, and, and we did know about her, but unfortunately, uh, in law, that would be a reason to deport you. How do you mean? Well, the possibility that you might be involved in a heinous crime at some unspecified point in the future. But I haven't gone over there, I haven't... It doesn't matter, mate. You can only punish people for the crimes they've committed, or you can punish them for the crimes they haven't committed, and you're in favour of punishing people for crimes they haven't committed, which means I have to deport you, just in case. 
Mm, I would still feel more. I'm not interested in what you feel. I'm not. I'm not interested in what. I'm, I'm not interested in what you feel. I'm interested in your intellectual justification for punishing people for crimes they haven't committed. Mm, okay. Where does it end? Yeah, no, I'll see that, but... I, if I, I'd use a bit more of this time on the radio, if I were you, because you're getting deported at the end of this call, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I, I mean, it stinks in one sense, yeah. but in another sense, you are subscribing to the school of thought that nobody can ever change. But what, what happens when it happens? Uh, well, God no, what it happens if it, what happens if it happens? You go back over the judicial process, as you always do when the system has failed, and work out why and where the failures occurred, which is precisely why it needs to be. It's why we have parole boards. It's why we have probation. It's why we have a justice system, so it can examine all of the variables that you've already decided you, you, you have a grasp of, when we both know that neither of us do. I'd rather make that choice now and... Well, then you get deported, alive. just in case. Well, yeah. You just do. Is it, is it a Keanu? It's a Tom Cruise film, isn't it? What's the Tom Cruise film where they travel back and they prevent crimes from happening because they've got some sort of mind-reading technology that lets them know that a crime... Uh, minority Report. Yeah, there you go. That's not where we're living, Rob. You're in Bracknell, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not in Minority Report. So it's a powerful emotional argument, but that's why you have judges, so that powerful emotional arguments get left at the door, and powerful legal arguments always, always supersede them. I've decided, Rob, on, on, on reflection, I'm not going to get you deported just in case on this occasion. And it, and it does feel like a different proposition to telling Shamima Begum that she can't come back here just in case. But that's why going on trial, it's why we have trials. It's why we have courtrooms. It's why we have a, 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 a transparent justice system, which, while far from perfect, would not punish anybody upon the whim of an individual. That's what ISIS do. That's not what we do. Andy's in Birmingham. Andy, what would you like to say? Yeah, so I um, faced the slight delight of being frontline on an intensive care uh, doctor anaesthetist and was responsible for taking people who were sick and stabilising them on ventilators Oof. on the intensive care unit last year. Gosh. And in that moment, I have to say, all I wanted was effective equipment to help me do my job, yes. um, whether it was a ventilator, whether it was PPE. And in that time of national emergency, if that piece of equipment was effective, then I didn't really care in that moment, in that time of national emergency. No, of and listening to your discussion, of course, the cronyism, the jobs of the boys, having Boris Johnson's telephone number and texting him is, of course, inappropriate. However, it, it's not just an issue with Tories, this. I think this is an issue of government. If you have got people like Deborah Mead and manufacturers, clothing manufacturers, saying we are offer, able to offer service and they're not able to have a process of contacting and um, disseminating their information upwards so that it can be yes. free and transparent, then that's not, I'm sure, exactly what the same would happen no matter who was in government. And so well, from I, my, I, my I, 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 I mean, obviously I'll let that stand, but it is, it's entirely speculative. And... I, I mean, I, I think of perhaps Peter Mandelson and his dodgy dealings with the Hindujas, but he he lost his job twice, so we I haven't we haven't had any flavour. We haven't had any government except the Tories for the last eleven years, Andy. So I, I don't know what you're drawing that on. Well, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, I'm just thinking from a sense of taking away a bit of pragmatism. I mean, if I had this moment where, you know, there's a complex supply line for lots of separate individual parts yes. and you need somebody to assemble all of those in a ex extremely sensitive way of course. and let me tell you ventilators are as the previous caller was saying incredible piece, um, pieces of mechanical engineering if a manufacturer gets in touch and says we are happy to provide that service then yes. you would be mad not to keep that person or that organization online to support you in a time of national which, le which leads me back. which leads me to the caller who, who was working for gtec at the time just down the road from you in worcestershire and, and who Absolutely. apparently had come up with something that worked and got told to stand down and keep quiet so I, 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 and, that, and that is folly uh, and that is folly and of course uh, individual well Dyson was offered tax breaks to carry on producing what turned out to be nothing 
Well, it's interesting, the, the, the Dyson thing. And, you know, having the process where you're sending text messages as the official way of contacting government is, of course, wrong. And I think that's what should come out of this. What is the process of up and down dissemination of information and the transparency? But in that moment where Boris Johnson, who hasn't been leader for that long, is faced with that happening, then I think in that moment, I, could I criticise him for saying I'll keep Johnson for keeping um, Dyson online? I wouldn't, I wouldn't particularly criticise no, him. Of course you that. have to criticise him if he was treating other companies with arguably better cases worse. Yeah, I mean... I mean your whole argument it, is built upon yeah. desperate times call for desperate measures. So why the hell would you go after a digger manufacturer and a Hoover bloke when there's a fellow up the road and there's a woman in Cambridge who's got a warehouse full of ventilators and she can't get her calls returned by the Department of Health? And then I'd steer and, you towards today's report from Transparency International, which says that this VIP lane that you got put on if you had the right contacts with the right politicians from the Conservative Party not only allowed you access to contracts without competition, but also gave you a ten times better chance of getting a contract than if you weren't in the VIP lane. Uh, exacerbated by the very simple fact that most companies didn't even know it existed. So your arguments and in, a, in, a, in an o open and honest universe, your arguments would be unassailable. But we live in the opposite of an open and honest universe. And I do take issue with your suggestion that everybody else would behave the same because you'd need to provide me with evidence. I'm not saying everyone behaves the same. I think what I'm saying is that as a front line in that time of need... You wouldn't care um, where it had come from. Yeah, because no, I'm looking that. at the patient that. and the person in front of me, and what's important is that patient and that person. And if I had an effective piece of kit to use, then in that time, you know, there was a, a sense, a little sense of pragmatism um, that I, I, I would want to... Um, I, I think I, we agree. You know, I think we agree. All of your I arguments, totally all of your arguments are, 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 are powerful and salient, but they are, I mean, unpicked by the fact that companies better qualified to produce the goods were being left out in the cold. And I quite agree with you. So I think what needs to come out of this is looking at the process, because the process that yes. was in place last year that was then fed into was, of course, wrong. And nobody would say that that wasn't the case. So in the future, you would want a more effective process where people with ventilators, people who can offer PPE um, within the correct specifications would be able to do whatever emergency we're going to face in the future. Yeah, well, that, that, country. That, that is the thing, isn't it? And uh, speaking of learning from mistakes, I, I'm reading about India this morning, and I don't know what you think as an intensive care doctor, but you can still fly into this country from India until four o'clock tomorrow morning, and they recorded, I think, just shy of 315,000 new cases in the last 24 hours. I mean, and again, you know, that, that debate about how um, closely we followed our borders. But mm. given the fact that Boris was, you know, and I'm no, offend, I'm no defender of him or cronyism with George Boys, sure. and, you know, my upset about people having a direct line to somebody is, is palpable. But given he was in that situation, that was, the, that was the system, and he was having to be pragmatic in that situation... Can you criticise him for what he did? Well, I can, yes, but I'm not as qualified as you are, which is when I turn your attention to um, Andrew Farmery, the Professor of Anaesthetics at Oxford University, who, because I've said throughout, I don't know how much of the show you've heard, if Dyson had come up with the goods, then it would be for his conscience to deal with the fact that he didn't want to pay taxes into the Treasury that pays your wages and all the other NHS staff's wages and all the NHS costs. That's between him and his conscience. If he'd come up with the goods, the tax break that he got after texting the Prime Minister at Cozily would would be um, a small price to pay for, for the provision of ventilators, but there was no provision of ventilators, and Andrew Farmer, he says, in his view, both knew it wasn't going to actually happen. And, you know, Andrew Farmer is somebody uh, who previously tutored me and um, there you go. the Oxford, Oxford <laughs> under group I have a personal respect for. But the question I would ask, yes. if you've got a working prototype for your ventilator, the question I'd ask is, who would manufacture it? Right, yes, so somebody else's prototype could have been manufactured by Dyson, which is, forgive me, one of the points we've what been making in the course of the programme, not not come Absolutely. up with something new from scratch. Uh, Alfie is in bow. Alfie, what would you like to say? Hiya. Um, I'd just like to try my best to answer the question why people would be less scared of COVID. Threatened, than, threatened. Not, less not, threatened not, yeah. by COVID. Like, for instance, myself, I, I had COVID last year yeah, same. amongst... All the, um, you know, I was at the highest level of precautions. I'm staying at home, off work, you know, mask, everything. I still manage, you know, to catch COVID um, yeah. anyway. And um, for myself, it was 
you know, like a cold for a couple of days. And I know I'm, I, I don't, you know, I can see that for unhealthier people or for older population, it has been well, it's killed, you know, it's, devastating. It's, 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 I mean, long COVID affects perfectly healthy people and it has, of course, killed people who are young and who are healthy. So, I mean, that, that... I understand that, but I can only go off, I can only go off my own experience. And That's very honest of you, because I, I find it really my... easy to go off other people's. Um, well, me, for instance, me and my brother had COVID and we so this both... So this is a sort of character fine. difference between you and me then? Um, I don't know, but it just put it this way. With the question to the mask versus the threat to COVID, yeah. for some people, not all, I'm, I'm not on either side. I'm not on anti-vax. I'm not on, right. you you're know, on, locking on myself radio. in my house. <laughs> um, but in terms of the mask, yeah, like you've mentioned yourself, when you see... You know, when you see world leaders put on their masks for the photo shoots and then as soon as it's done, whip them off, shake hands and hug. If someone like no, they take, they take, they take them, Johnson they isn't take them afraid, off. They then, take them off for the photo shoots. No, sorry, they take them off. Like, as soon as the photos are done, yeah. like, there's plenty of videos online of, you know, no, but you're watching like them back. You're watching them the wrong way around. They, they, take, the, they put the, take the masks off for the photo shoots because they don't want to be photographed wearing the masks. And then when they're going about the business and they're not on official duties, they put the masks on. But let's well, pretend again, you're you right. Can, let's again, pretend you're I'm right. Not, no, let's pretend again, you're right. Not, and not, the, 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 no, Let me get this out. So wh- okay. why, why are they doing this dodgy thing, do you think? Why, why are they pretending that masks work when secretly they don't believe that they do it might uh, not everyone believes james that it is a massive conspiracy like myself, no i know it's I a simple believe, question why I do you think believe... joe biden or whoever else you want to mention is only pretending to believe that masks are effective i believe it's just part of the the show to yeah. to prove that it is still really bad do you know what i mean i'm not saying that it's not still you know we are in a pandemic right i believe some of the efforts that are made um can be a bit more theatrical to show, hey, look, now, we That's still fascinating. Do Why? Why are they doing that, do you think? It's to prove, you know, I guarantee if you turned off every aspect of the media tomorrow, yeah. or, or even as this, you know, as the pandemic started, yeah. uh, it, it would probably be less feared than it is now because people aren't seeing people dead in the street. So, so, so the, so the question the remains, though, Alfie, every day. The, the question is, why, why are they pretending it's worse than it really is, in your view? Because I, I don't think they are. You think they are. I'd love to know why. why. Why are they pretending it's worse than it really is? I'm not saying they're pretending that it's worse than it is. I'm saying they need, they're treating the issue communally. So they need everyone to be on board with the vaccine and stuff. But they can't allow, if they allow someone like myself to go about my business and say, oh, I don't, need it for myself yeah i don't want to but that's wear exactly what's wanted... been in place i'm, that, a, guard, that, I'm that... a gardener i stay on my own most of but that's the time, literally so... been the rules for the last couple of months is that you literally can do whatever you want and decide to do it yourself so so they've literally been doing the thing you just said that they can't do and t- in fact they're still doing it today alfie it's only tomorrow that these new rules kick in so that's not the answer I'm to not, the question this is, is this it is the thing i'm not i'm not against wearing the mask and i'm not i'm not myself a scientist and i'm not 100 percent that they do or don't work. I'm just saying that at one point in time, yeah. I had COVID. I was fine. No, I understood all of that. But the time, mask isn't, isn't the mask really designed to help. So I, I do. I'm going to ask you once more. I, and and uh-huh. th- thank you for being so honest. The, the 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 notion that they are exaggerating the threat or pretending that it, it's really it, worse than it is. I'd love to know why not, you think they're doing that. Not that I'm sold either way. Like I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I am still well, in the middle. Of and are, the you, between... you hear on the radio, essentially yep. saying to me that you might be able to explain why people are more fearful of the mask mandate than they are of the of the uh, virus. And the answer well, has logical, to has to include logic? that that makes some yeah. sense. There's a logic to it, which means that the politicians you're talking about who are taking off their masks before or after the photo yeah. shoots, it's immaterial. They are pretending that things are worse than they really are. You must have a theory as to why that is. If at this point, imagine this, if at this point oh. it came to light that the vaccine wasn't as effective as it has been promoted to be, a person such as yourself would be very distraught so they would have to continue you know if they've let 70 percent of the population but, get, but everybody get knows that the vaccine they, could be overtaken allow? by a new variant everybody knows that the vaccine isn't 100 percent effective no, I know. so what i'm trying to say is if someone like me will not get vaccinated because i believe that you said you weren't anti-vax at the beginning they can't they you they said won't. you said you weren't anti-vax 10 minutes ago 
just because, yeah, I've had vaccines in my life. I just don't want this one right now. I think when you're on a phone in about coronavirus and you say you're not anti-vax, everyone presumes you're talking about the coronavirus vaccine, mate, don't you? OK, f- fair enough. But the difference between myself <laughs> and you I'm gonna is ask I you can once change more. my why, mind. Why are they pretending that it's worse than it is? I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to explain that. I'm trying to say that if someone like myself does not want the vaccine, yes. they cannot allow 70% of a population to believe one thing and 30 percent to walk around and do what they want because someone like yourself but that's what's very angry at that fact that's what's happening sorry that, that's what's happening you're, you're there literally telling me you haven't been vaccinated and then in the next breath you're telling me that they can't let that they can't allow that to happen because i'll get angry yeah i'm saying so they have to continue the mask wearing they have to continue now it's the care homes my brother lost his job next it's the nhs where do you think it? Where do you no, think it you, end, or, or where do you, would not, you like it to end? No, you're, you're describing things to me that I think prove that the threat is big, and I'm asking you why you think they would pretend the threat isn't as big as it is. What, what is what is to be gained, Alfie? I, I from, I no, believe, mate, we're okay, going to run okay. out of time, so I'm going to make okay. it really crystal. No, hang on, I want to get this crystal clear. You believe be. that they are exaggerating the scale of the problem or the threat of the virus. I disagree yeah. with you on that, but. If I didn't disagree with you, I would ask you still, why are they doing it, mate? Why are they, why are they misleading us on this one? You have to at least try to answer that question I'm, in, in a clear I'll do my fact. best. Well, you've had nearly 10 minutes and I've only got 60 seconds left. So just give me the short okay, version. Okay, 30 seconds. Why are, they, <laughs> why are they misleading us, mate? Because yeah? there are people that corona does affect in a very bad way and there are people that it doesn't. But they need to treat the problem communally because it's too much too much of a systematic problem that, to try and weed out who that, needs treatment and who doesn't. That's so not misleading. Everybody. That's, everybody knows that that's true. Everybody knows it affects okay. some people worse than it affects others. So that's not an answer to the question, Alfie. It's not even the beginning of an answer. It's not even a bad answer. It's a non-answer. Why are they exaggerating? Unless you're literally saying, oh, they're, they're making the messaging that they make in order to keep as many people alive as possible, and that's what you disapprove of. Good luck with the gardening, mate. Jesus. Tom is in Hampstead. Tom, what would you like to say? Uh, good morning. Um, I was actually at the Riverside yesterday, um, and I booed Denis. Okay. Why, why do you think uh, the players before, are doing it? I I know the reasons that, that they've said that they're doing it. Um, so you booed I that, then? Uh, no. Um, my so, point, so you booed the reasons that they haven't said? My undertone is that when I hear the words, Black Lives Matter, I think of burning buildings in America, attacking the police and violent protests. Yes. So I'm not... Have you anti- tried not I'm to? Not, uh, <clears throat> sorry? Have you tried not to think that? Have you tried to think about the words and what they well, actually mean? Of, well, one of my aunties actually was killed during a Black Lives Matter protest last year. And that's so, appalling. But have you, have you tried thinking about what the words actually mean? I understand what they mean and I agree what, with what, what they, they mean. What do they mean? And, <clears throat> well, they, they're saying that Black Lives Matter also matter. Black Lives Black Lives also matter. I understand that. So why point, are you booing it? Because of what I've just said about what I think about when I think of those words. Now, can but I, if, 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 I, if, 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 if I, I walk into a room and you're <clears throat> and you're kneeling, I don't get to tell you why you're kneeling or what you're showing support for. I get only to ask you. So we've asked the footballers why they're doing it, and they've told us, Tom. Which I, I, I respect. And, well, you don't you know, respect. The polar opposite of respecting it, mate, is booing it. I'm afraid it couldn't be a, a, a bigger U-turn or a, or a more violent opposition to respect than the idea of booing something. So you don't respect it. You, you completely and categorically disrespect it. So let's just make sure we're using words accurately. <clears throat> Absolutely. But it's, you know, I think if you make a bold statement rather than just taking the knee every week, actually, I think I would respect it more. But it's it's just a complete, like politically correct statement. Done. But, but again, you're but telling them why they're doing it, and they're giving you a very different answer to that question. So, what do you think qualifies you to say? Oh, I know that's why you say you're doing it, but I know better. Well, again, that's your opinion. You know, I, I, you know, for me, no, no, you I, boo I, them. <laughs> like, they've told you why they're doing so, it, and you're so, booing them for completely different reasons. But then that's my opinion. Is that, you know, your, your opinion <laughs> is that you know better than them as to why they're kneeling. I, you claiming no, it was I, my I, opinion I, a minute I've ago. I've read, I've read what they said about why they're why they're kneeling. You know, I've done, I've been going to England games for ten years, home and away. Um, I'm going next week to Croatia at home. I'll, I'll be at all the Euro games, and 
I'm also going to Qatar next summer. What, uh, do, next you, what, Christmas, what, sorry. what do you think? It, what, what impact do you have? Mm. Think it has on the players when they get booed by their own fans before the game starts? Do, do you think I, it I think, might <clears> gee them up I, a bit? I, honestly, I think that part's bad. Be, and I'm one of the people that do it. I, I think it's bad because you know England are going into a major tournament, and we're basically the biggest story at the moment is the fact that there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a divide between the fans and the players. Well, some fans, mate. I think you got drowned oh, yeah, out friends, by the yeah, majority. No, but, just just a small account, proportion yeah, of take, fans who many people think are racist, but I presume you reject that description. I, I, I I'm absolutely outright not racist, but yeah. you know. But I, you I boo the Black Lives like, Matter <clears throat> kneeling. I blew the black. Yeah. Uh, excuse but me, you're I definitely not racist. Yeah. Sorry. What do you think the word support means? Support what in, in what context? Any well, context support you is want. Getting behind, getting behind, and getting behind, isn't it? You know, encouraging. Yeah. So you're there to actually make them play worse, are you? Uh, well, no. You know, I spent probably our, well, our best part of. 50,000, 60,000 over the last 10 years following in home. I was in Russia two years ago. Yes, but we're talking about time. yesterday. I mean, by yeah. booing the players, do you think you are more likely to make them perform better or worse? Um, I think it's a very touchy subject. That's not got... Uh, I, it's I really not. You, know, I, I, you can ask me the same question if you want. If you boo <coughs> me... Well, put yourself in that situation. What do you do for a living, Tom? Also, sorry? What do you do for a living? I work in the city. Okay, so if I came into your office and started booing you and, and um, uh, disrespecting you and, and you'd say to me, why are you doing that? I'm but just I'm trying to do my job. And I said to you, hang not, on a minute, on Tom, I know on. what you're really up to. You're not doing that. And, and do you think you would perform better or worse at work? But hang on, I'm not disrespecting all... Like, yeah, yes, you are. You're booing your them. Job. We've I'm already established that. You. So would you be no, 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 more no. likely to make them play better or worse by booing them? It's not a trick question. I'm not, so. but I'm not, I'm, you know, when the players come on the pitch, they get a clap, we sing their slam, and stuff like that. There's and then you boo them. Like so do you not. think booing them will make them play better or worse? But it's not about the football, why I'm booing them. <laughs> I don't care. Do you think it will make them play better or worse? I mean, I guess worse. But that's, <laughs> and that's then, and here point. you are. Are you going to boo them at the Croatia game? Absolutely. Yeah? Cool. You're a massive yeah. supporter, you are, aren't you? How big's your flag? Sorry? How big's your flag? I've got a British flag just to, you know... Yeah, I know, really, how, I know you have. You don't need to tell me that. I'm just wondering how big it is. Uh, I can't remember, sorry. All right, and how hard do you wave it when you're booing the England players? Uh, I don't wave a flag. Oh, call yourself a football fan. I know, I know. Unbelievable, isn't Mate, it? do me a favour... Seriously, keep keep your thoughts, that's fine. If you want to believe that you know better as to why these human beings who've told you why they're doing something are really doing it, you, you've got a better insight. Just don't boo them, because we want to win, right? And you've just said you, yourself that you, by booing just, them, you make them play just, worse. Can't um, you just keep just, quiet for, for, for a month? I'm, well, but the problem is, it, look, look at Millwall. If, honestly, no, I James, don't want to my, look at Millwall. My, I don't support my, Millwall. My, I want England to my, win. You don't want my, them to win. Why are you going to the games? Why are you using up a seat that a proper fan could have? Well, you know, it's based on loyalty, and I was imagining... Loyalty to I'm, the people I'm, that you boo? No, yeah. I mean, OK, yeah, here ends loyalty. today's meeting of the Brains Trust. Georgina's in Tunbridge Wells. Georgina, what would you like to say? Uh, well, I'm not going to persuade you otherwise, James, oh. because I was actually on tenterhooks that um, you were going to say that you were on the side of the employee, because I'm... Well, I usually am. I usually I'm am. Yes, I know you are, and so I was like, oh, no. <laughs> no I'm categorically on the side of the employer. Um are you? Yeah, are I, you I always? Really um, invariably, I have to be honest. Oh, I see. So this is uh, this is I'm a rare occasion where our views align. This isn't this isn't a, 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 an echo chamber. It, it, exactly. Okay. And, um, so my point is uh, that where you work is very similar to the hours you work, what work you do, when you take your lunch break, and in my mind, my employer is it's totally their prerogative to. Um, determine these things as it's totally my de uh, prerogative to hand in my notice to take it, I'm not to, happy. to take it or leave it the other variables you mentioned because remember that we're operating under the provision under the presumption that productivity is unchanged by location so oh, which i don't think is actually reasonable unlucky because them's, them's, them's the rules yeah, them, enough, them's the rules enough. so <laughs> all of the other things you mentioned and and a lot of the research suggests that 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 it actually is un largely unchanged but anyway in my Too early, in, I think, but it, yeah. it could be but in this company it went down didn't it because i think people got used to working from home so they were more productive at first and then it, it began to slide a bit but for the purposes of this conversation the hours you work when you take your lunch break and uh, whatever else you mentioned all play much more clearly into the productivity question than simple location does. I mean, most people in offices do most of their work on the phone, don't they, or on the computer? Mm, 
Yes, but um, no, I, I don't actually agree with that, James, okay. because, um, you know, if you worked in an industry where uh, nine to five, which is that that's the, the mainstay, and you went to your boss and said, oh, yeah, no, I want to work 12 till eight. Um, surely it's his problem as it will know. That, it, that, is, yeah, uh, but, that doesn't fit. Well, but what if... I mean, what that, I'd want a boss like that, wouldn't I? If, if, if there, it wasn't going to have any detrimental impact upon my performance professionally, but it was going to have a really nice positive impact upon my life outside yeah. work, that's the kind of boss mm-hmm. we'd want. Well, yes, but, but you know what, James? What, um, Georgina? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> what, what, what we want in life, this is what I sort of try and teach my children is, you know, you, you might ask, and that is your prerogative. And he might say, OK, well, if you couldn't... all right, then how about we do 10 to 6? And here's the problem. Um, like here's here's the problem. Say... Here's the problem. Yeah. Here, you are actually dissuading me from my position, but unintentionally, because you have just inadvertently compared the relationship between employer and employee to mother and child. No, I haven't. I've said you I literally teach just my did. children you, about. Yeah. No, 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 James. I said we're talking about teaching. <laughs> yeah. No, so I know, I but, but you're saying you can't have what you want. Is what you were teaching your children. You can ask, you but I can have... say no. And you are. You literally just compared yeah. the relationship yeah. between employer and employee to, to between yeah, okay. parent and child. Okay. Well, that was exactly my point. You. I mean, that's why I don't it? want to be here. I don't want to be in your team anymore. But no, you can ask. I, I could ask something. Of and my if you can employer. prove that it's not of any detriment whatsoever, I mean, it'd be a little bit like your child asking you for something healthy, and you saying no just because you can. Well, yes, exactly. Well, that I wouldn't be a, that wouldn't be very good parenting. <laughs> I know, but but, but that right, you want spinach. You want spinach. Parenting. You'll have a bag of crisps, and you'll blooming well like them. That's where you are now as a parent and and as a, an employer. Yeah, but. but... <laughs> but, but that's, okay. I mean, it is no really. No, it, I'm not. I'm listen, sure. philosophically, I, I know where you're coming from. That's just how it should be. Uh, but uh, but that gave me pause. You've now cast me, or made me realise I was probably signing up to a slightly, uh, I don't know, Victorian model where, where you know, my children will do exactly what I tell them to do. And so will my employees. Maybe some people like that. I don't. But I'm still of the view that the employer gets to determine where I work. Steve's in Oxford. Steve, what would you like to say? Hello there. Uh, pleased to meet you. Hello, Steve. Uh, well, first of all, um, I don't think anybody said there would be no problems. Um, I distinctly remember Michael Gove. Sun, sunlit uplands, Steve. Have, have, we will no, be having our well, cake and eating it. And, David yeah, Davis, th- there will this. be no downside, only a considerable upside. I, mean, I, I could go on. I do this for a living, so it probably <laughs> wouldn't be fair. Well, at the end of the day, they are conservatives and... BS is what they're specialising in. Well, that, that was I've a quick retreat from saying. That was a quick retreat from saying they never said no, that there wouldn't be any problems no, to saying that they no, they speak nonsense. No, so who are you blaming, but, uh, Steve? Michael Gove, though, uh, did actually tell us he was he was more honest about it, right? And say that there will be bumps in the road, and indeed there are. Who do I blame? Um, I think it's a bit. <laughs> I think I would analogise it as it's a bit like blaming the therapist or a doctor for trying to get a heroin addict off det- onto detox. Oh, yeah. Go on, tell me more. Of pain. Uh, and I'm, so my point of view comes from myself. It's not something that's anything to do with the Conservative Party. They're all crooks. All the politicians are crooks. So well, they're, they're, and, they're clearly uh, not, right? They're clearly not all crooks. Some of them are, well, are honest and some of them are doing their best to make the country a better place. And, and some of them help people. Interest. But yeah. I digress. I digress. You do. Um, I think... Um, you just give me a sentence on who is responsible for all the problems that the government said wouldn't happen. Uh, well, basically, yeah. we have had COVID, um, if you'll hear me out. We have had COVID. Oh, That's been a big problem. Uh, the problems of... Uh, the whole uh, world's had COVID. Shortages. The whole world's yeah. had COVID. Steve. The whole world also has a truck driver issue. Mm, I've n- there is no other the country in the world with, with, with petrol stations closing due to not having any fuel or supermarkets not, yeah. having, not having food yeah. on the shelves because of a lorry driver shortage. So yeah. let's not go down not that respect. rabbit hole, Steve. Okay, well, speaking of someone... You can't believe... You can't say that politicians uh, are all liars, uh, Steve, uh, and then no. reveal that you believe them. No, I don't. I believe in my own opinions. I uh, believe in reading The Sun. Yeah. I believe in reading The Guardian. Okay. I believe in reading The Independent. I okay. believe in reading The Daily Mail. Well done. I believe in then using my brain. Yes. Drawing conclusions because I know that all sides will 
give their own version, their yeah. own, they so, all have their own. So that, what's your so, version? Well, why are all the problems, or who is responsible for all the problems that the government said wouldn't happen? Okay. Well, first of all, as I was trying to say, someone who's lived in the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland for the last few years, um, the problems of truck drivers and labour shortages are not um, common only to the UK. Yeah, but we've it's already been that. down this road, mate. I don't need yeah. now to open up my phone okay. lines and say anybody in Northern Ireland struggling to get petrol because we both know what yeah, would happen. Well, anybody in Ireland Ireland's seeing shortages in their supermarket. Shelves, James, there are short, empty shelves. When I've gone down my local Tesco just outside of Dublin, believe me, I talk to the staff there, right. um, and they say that they've got problems like with deliveries. They're having issues as well. The truck driver crisis is global. Okay, okay let's Steve, it we're, we're, it's no, mate, listen, so, you have to stop uh, now because truck, you are yeah, believing the lies robots. you're being told. There is, there no, is no, a shortage of truck drivers in all sorts of countries, be. but nobody else has got petrol stations that are shut and nobody else has got supermarket shelves that are empty. So in I, I can only give you one more go. Which human beings are responsible for the problems that this country is uniquely facing? Which human beings, Steve? And, and you can draw on okay. whatever newspaper you please, the but I insist crisis. on an answer. Right. The, the uh, petrol station crisis didn't exist about 10 days ago or so. Which human beings um, are responsible the for the unique problems the in the United Kingdom, the Steve? basically, the oh, media, Steve. the uh, Sky News, Last BBC, chance, Steve. decided to start telling us that 10 petrol stations out of several hundred... No, that was BP, Steve. Closed. That was BP that revealed that yeah, they'd closed 20 and petrol the stations. Media decided to make great hay of that. No, Paul Scully Doesn't came really forward and told crazy. people not because, to panic by. No, because... We all know, James, that if you say that there is a crisis, even just talking about... Right, so we're blaming the government. We're blaming the, we're the, blaming the business thousand. minister. Is it the business minister, Paul Scully, and the prime minister, Boris Johnson, who said, don't panic by, therefore it's their fault? Well, you shouldn't panic by. OK, Steve, day, I've done my best, mate. Can, it, I, can I just do a little guess on how you voted in the referendum? Would that be unfair? No, let me finish my point. No, please. Steve, you, 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 you've had 10 minutes, mate. And you haven't got a point. Can I just have a little guess how you voted in the referendum? If you're barracking me, that's very rude. It rhymes it's with your name, Steve. James. It rhymes with your name, yeah. doesn't it? No. Yes. I, it doesn't matter what I voted. I'd just like to know, petrol, please. On this instance, yes. the tanker crisis, yes. right? Yes. It was, if you tell people that there is a problem with getting petrol, they will panic by. We know this because it happened last year with the toilet rolls, James. We all know this. You only have to put the word out and it happens. Ten petrol stations, 12 possibly, out of a, how many hundred thousand petrol stations in the country? Philip's in Liverpool. Back to the lockdown, Philip. What's going on? Hi, mate. Yeah, I've got to take my call. Um, welcome. Yeah, I think it's uh, about time we left people to make their own decisions for their own health and their own safety. Um, We've right, even people who haven't got, time. even people that you wouldn't trust to lace their own shoes. <laughs> exactly. Well, the, yeah, because you can catch it. Because you can catch it. Living in a free country, you can catch it, it off them. You realise that? Yeah, no, certainly. Yeah, yeah, but you can obviously re sort of limit your situation, your exposure. So if you decided that you wanted to remain locked down, then keep yourself locked down. You don't mm. have to go to a nightclub if it opens. Mm. You wouldn't have to go to a wedding with a hundred guests if you thought it was not safe for you to go. So, but what are you, you basing your what are you basing your judgments on? I mean, if the scientists say don't do it, and then you say no, I'm going to anyway. What is it that you're drawing on to, to to confidently reject the advice of the scientists? Well, I've, I've had a, a vaccination, so I'm sort of obviously going by the, the confidence that the vaccine works from what the scientists have told me. But yes. it's by the same argument of... of so that smoking, would be a vaccine know, people... passport argument, wouldn't it? Which is slightly different. If you've got double dose vaccine already and you've had the 10 days or whatever it is for it to kick in, then you should have like a, 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 a loyalty card, a free pass to get in and to do things that people who haven't been vaccinated can't do. I, I'd agree with you on that, but that's that would involve government implementation. That would be just a different I, I, policy. I mean, I, I don't think people should have a passport, no, but... Well, I how do I know you've had own. a vaccine, then? Well, you don't. That's the point of living in a free country, don't you? You don't know what people no, have mate, around if, you. If a free country doesn't mean you're free to lie and, and risk I'm people's lives. I'm not saying lies. you lie to people. I'm well, then how do I know you've had the vaccine, that. then? Well, you, you, you don't, do you? Well, how do I know you're not but lying? You don't either. Right. But again, no, so, so you're in favour of people being free to lie about having the vaccine and then march around mixing with people who are telling the truth? I didn't suggest people were free to lie. I'm suggesting you did. You that, said that people... I said you'd be lying, and you said that's what happens in a free country. 
no, I wouldn't. I think you're misinterpreting what I'm trying to trying to say. But okay, um, I think it, you just it, invented. I, mean, I think you just invented the word misinterpretate. So you know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's all swings and roundabouts. So just talk me through again how we stop the people lying about it, it poisoning or infecting the people who are telling I'm not the truth. Suggesting people. What I'm suggesting is if you feel like it's dangerous for you to venture outside... I'm not talking about building. feelings, I'm talking about the facts of vaccination. So you've been vaccinated, you're comfortable, well, you can, you you're confident going your out. There's someone you, know well, you can't justify your own risk if other people are lying and they're not carrying a you card that proves you know that, they're you know vaccinated. You of how many people are vaccinated. So if you're in a room with ten people, you know that the odds are that eight of them are vaccinated. No, you don't. No, no, you, you don't. You do because the all. vaccination programme says that 80% of adults are vaccinated. Well, it, I mean, first of all, it doesn't. So you, you can weigh up your own <laughs> risks by, by the figures that the government are giving you in the facts of how many people are vaccinated and how many aren't. Right. So if you're in a room with 10 people... Well, the figure's you, you actually 60%, mate. Who aren't. The, 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 the figure's... Oh, fully vaccinated, uh, not of the first dose, including six, first doses, then you're close to the 80. Uh, but people, again, obviously, you... Even if that's the fact, obviously you've got these sixty percent fully vaccinated. You know that if you're in a room with ten people, likely like, that, more of them no, are vaccinated. But you don't know that at all. Well, you can. You, well, you it can depends use on your age. It it depends. No, you, it depends on the age group. If you're in a room with ten people in their twenties, what's the likelihood that they're all vaccinated, champ? In their twenties, well, yeah. if they're twenty to twenty-four, then quite low. Twenty-five yeah. plus. Well, ha and how do you how do you establish how old they are? You can ask for identification. But you're against that. No, I'm asking for identification. Everyone holds identification. I was against the vaccine passport. Well, what's the difference? Well, a vaccine passport indicates your medical stature, or an ID indicates your age. Pre precisely. What's the difference? Well, well, why wouldn't you well, want to be able to prove your age uh, and prove that you've been vaccinated? What's the fundamental philosophical difference for you there? I think one's more personal and private than the other. What, your age? No, your age is, it's just your age, isn't it? But some people hold dear to them. Some people think that they're... Well, they're it, exactly. Some people think their age is private. John Collins hasn't revealed yeah, yeah, exactly. for about that's 30 again, years. Again, that the problems are living in a free country, isn't it? But you keep, you keep talking about a free country, but, but you seem to be defending people's freedom to lie. Yeah, of course. But okay, no, that's yeah. fine. I mean, I, I don't want to live in a country where there are no consequences for lying. I don't think that is what freedom is. I want to be free to live in a country where I know whether or not the person sitting next to me has been vaccinated. You don't care. You're going to, I don't know, chop their leg off and count the rings, calculate their age, and then decide statistically that there's quite a good chance they have been vaccinated, so you'll happily lick their face. Yeah, well... No, no, no fair. Good no, luck to you, mate. Have a great weekend. Robert's in Brighton. Robert, what do you reckon? Uh, how are you doing, James? I'm pretty um, good. Uh, for, first, I, look, I'd like to say, uh, you know, listen to Chantel, I, I admire how she's dealt with sort of the cards she's been, been, yes. been dealt and, and how she handled the situation. I identify with it. Um, I'm in a similar enough situation. Okay. Um, had to, you know, shelter right from the start, not touch anything, and made the dining room into a quarantine area every time we got a shipment or food or whatever else. Yeah, I remember that. Um, but, I, look, I, I did want to say one thing, which is I, I really think one of the problems we have with this entire discussion, and it's sort of from the start, maybe it's where we are today in society, but... We, we just overgeneralize too much. Yes, right? for I sure. Mean, so much separation of two completely different views as opposed to some middle ground where people can actually have differences of opinion and be rational. There's so much hyperbole. And it's like, you know, look, uh, here's an example, right? Anti-vaxxers is exactly the term that you, you yourself and everybody else is using for anyone who is concerned about this particular vaccine at this point in time. Fair enough, right? No. I mean, I can have concerns about the vaccine because... No, 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 anti-vaxxer is someone who is opposed to it and doesn't doesn't want to take yeah, it. Yeah, but, but I mean, my, my, my point is, is anti-vaxxer probably is a good generalization, which causes so much stir in people that you're against every single vaccine and everything the government does. And right well, now... It's, I think, not my, it's not my experience. No, no, like, there's an awful not. lot of people who are at great pains to tell me they've been vaccinated against polio or, or, or TB or, or whatever okay. else it may be, but they've got yeah. a particular problem with this one because they've been right. misled into believing that it's... I think the phrase they use is experimental. So they, they, they've, they've been yeah, down that, you, that, that YouTube rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm not... And again, but I think there's a lot of people who could be concerned about this vaccine without actually being somebody who is, by the way, anywhere near your pedophile or any of the other kind of theorists, right? Well, I um, or, again, I disagree. Or, 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 I, I think it's just different flavors of delusion. And, and one is laughable, as you say, but the others are just as ridiculous. So, so you think that someone that maybe is concerned about this vaccine for health reasons or lack of longevity studies is a delusional? Yes. Really? Okay. 
because it's been out long enough to prove that it's really okay the, the, and it's really been through the through all the testing the the proof that it is a bigger risk to get coronavirus than it is to get the vaccine is absolutely clear okay so that's interesting that's interesting well, so, i'm amazed uh, you didn't realize that is the first time you've no, tuned no, no. in it's, it's 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 not that i don't realize it it's that if you said I'm 100% going to get coronavirus or take the vaccine. It's a false comparison. Is yeah, the but problem, no one right? said because that. Because there's plenty of people. There's plenty no, of no people one said who can that, be really though. careful. Yes, but no one said that. And not get the vaccine. They can continue to but no one practice said, no, no safety one has, and no social distancing. Yeah, I mean, you can, I guess. You could, and, and that's why I think probably it would be wrong to force anybody to get the vaccine. But you're in favor of isolation. You're just suggesting it should be self-imposed rather than... Um, societally imposed. I'm, I'm, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really... Imp- so so yeah, you so choose not to go to a nightclub, but you choose not to go to a nightclub because you've got, quotes, concerns, end quotes, about the vaccine, but you'd be uncomfortable with being told that you're not allowed into the nightclub because you've got, quotes, concerns, end quotes, about the vaccine. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely answer your question on the, the the passports, right? Because I know it's... it's a, Hang it's on, a I just clarify whether no, I... Did I describe you correctly then before? You've got... You, you, you would choose sorry, not ahead, to... Yeah. You choose not to go into the nightclub because you're worried about catching coronavirus, but you would object to being told you can't go into the nightclub because you've got concerns about the vaccine. So I could choose where I want to go to make sure that I'm being careful about my own health. Absolutely. But it's not just your I own health, object, is it? I would object... I would object to... Um, any kind of passports that don't give an alternative for testing negative. But, but I, yeah, you, but, you, I mean, you, testing you, negative you, in, 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 as an alternative to the passport is, is pretty clear. That seems pretty fair. But the, oh, is it? yeah, cause it's, it's funny because we never say that. We keep well, we, saying, every time I've done this phone in, we got prove uh, that you got a double jab. Or right? that you haven't got, or, or that you haven't got coronavirus. We have said oh, that yeah. already this hour, I think three gotcha, times. Gotcha. That's okay. No, that, that, which, so, which is helpful. Well, which is yeah, helpful, but it's right? also because, repetitive. That's a big difference, isn't it? Well, yes, yes and no, because the difference is, of course, and perhaps the difference that you're missing is that vaccines aren't just about your personal health. Because... Because a vaccinated people, population is an immune population. So no, the more people... That's, the, see, that's, that's such a false no, The it, vaccinated it, population is not an immune population. They can still catch it. Yes, of course they can. They can still pass it, it along. It, forgive me, so immunized. Really, an immunized population. The more people are vaccinated, the more immunized a population is. So it's not just an issue of your own personal health. And that's the so, point. So not, that's the not, distinction but between... Immune, are they? That they're immunized, so you can never remove it. Well, you have actually in the past with some viruses, but this isn't yeah. the this isn't the gotcha that you think it is. The more but people, see, is, the more people James, that is, are vaccinated, the, the safer. If you'd allow me to, if you if you'd allow me to finish, the more people are vaccinated, the safer everybody is. Which is why the conflation of vaccination with testing is, forgive me, very selfish. So, so I, you I, keep I talking about your before, personal I health. Love it. I, honestly, I, I love it when people go over and they want to play the selfish card. But in fact, <laughs> no, 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 I laugh at laugh at me, but let me finish now. No, because in, because but, I'm but not playing fact, a selfish card. I, I, I'm no, describing no, in, the conflation of testing with vaccination. And the phrase you've used, I think, more than any other in the course of this conversation is my personal health. We're not having a phone in, Robert, about your personal is, health. I, I, We're I, having I, a I, conversation I, I, and a phone in. And we've been we've been clear. We've been clear from the start that this is a conversation about public health, which you haven't mentioned once. So, so on public health, what happens is, is everybody who gets vaccinated actually now, if you really stop and think about it, have taken care of their personal health because they're protected from getting sick. No, again, they're I'm afraid that the, I'm, af- no, I, 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 I'm afraid that's on. not true because the people who are least likely, true. well, you, you can pretend that you believe that, but I don't have to join in. The people who are least likely to suffer badly from coronavirus are the ones who are being most altruistic and public spirited when they get vaccinated. It's why it's so important to encourage people who have been persuaded that it doesn't pose a major health risk to them that they must get vaccinated in order to protect all of the people to whom it does pose a major health risk. This is this is ABC stuff, Robert. I mean, it's been going on for 18 months. If you haven't worked this out yet, I very much doubt I can help you. Yeah, I, 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 James, honestly. Hey, Robert, it's, it's honestly. A bit, it's, it's a bit insulting to put it that way because, in fact, 
The people that get the vaccine, it's great. And I think the people it, who get It's can, not insulting to put it that way. It's factual, people... Robert. It's exactly factual. The reason why the onus is upon persuading people to whom the virus does not pose a major health risk to get the vaccine is precisely, incontrovertibly, and completely to protect the people to whom the virus does pose a major health risk. That's not insulting. It's not laughable. And it's not wrong. It's just science. So, James, the people that actually get the vaccine have now protected themselves. They can still pass it on to other people, whether or not. And vaccinated people will suffer a lot less than unvaccinated people. So how are they protecting someone who is unvaccinated or unable to get the vaccine? uh, No, that's that's not what we're talking about. People who are unable to get the vaccine, Robert, are not people who've got, quotes, concerns, end quotes, about the vaccine. And there it is. They but can well, be a combination well of yeah, the two. Yeah, of course they can, but that's not, that's not what you're talking about. Society also... Uh, no, in fact, I am. Society, in fact, I am. Oh, okay, you are now, but you haven't been for the <laughs> no, last 10 no, minutes. I, I, oh, that's absolutely I, fine, James, to be honest I, with you, Robert. I, I am. But society but also is, moves, is, collect... Society also moves collectively to protect people who can't get the vaccine. And the more people that are vaccinated, the safer the people... No, hang on, I haven't finished speaking. The safer the people who, for whatever reason, can't get vaccinated are. That, again, is not an opinion. That is science. No, how? Tell me more about that. How? (laughs) Well, I did say, I think it's now 11.45, I think three minutes ago, I said, if you haven't worked this out for yourself by now, it's highly highly unlikely that I could help you. I'll tell you what, listen back to the podcast. I've already explained it twice. How can someone who can still pass the virus on, even with the vaccine, yes. protect someone who isn't vaccinated? Because Tell they reduce. Okay, because the likelihood of that happening is reduced by the vaccine. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Vaccinated people How? are less infectious than vaccinated people. That is not true. That okay. is not what well, the studies are showing. Well, it's not what you... the CDC is showing. Okay. It's not what the World Health Organization is showing. Okay, so why does vaccination reduce infection? It reduces the sickness that you get. No, 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 no. Why does it reduce new cases? Why does it reduce the number of infections? It's reducing the number of people who are showing signs of. No, no, no. It's reducing the number of people who are testing positive. Why is that, do you think? Who's going? Are they actually? Do they actually have a study for testing everybody who has it? Because they don't. No, James, they don't. I think you've had your fun. I think we both know that this hasn't gone quite as well as you were intending, but I hope it's been helpful to people who've fallen for the same sort of crud that you're peddling. Phil's in Stockport. Phil, solve this riddle for me. I'm not sure I can can go that far, James, but it seems to me that it it, it is only guidance that's being offered here. I mean, your point about the 270,000 people, is it's just an estimate of of the likely numbers of people likely to uh, to sort of uh, not... uh, not follow the guidance, but uh, my my main problem here is is essentially that um, you can make uh, um, an issue out of anything at any time. You're you were trained as a philosopher, I think, at uh, at the LSE. Uh, trained as a what? You, you're trained to be in a permanent cloud of unknowing, so it's easy to sort of pick holes in it. But Sorry, what was I? What was I trained as? I I, I didn't hear he what told, you said. He told he told me I was into the other day. You said that you were uh, uh, that you did philosophy at the LSE. Is that is that right? Yeah, thirty years ago. Yeah. Well, nevertheless, that that, that trained you into basically you know, any argument can be reversed or inverted. They no, 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 mate. Philosoph- philosophy, philosophy is a quest for knowledge, Phil. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a search. Yes, it's, it's, it's a, a search for certainty. It's a search for uh, certainty. It's, it's the things that you can it, state it, with absolute confidence. So Boris Johnson, yeah, for example, yeah. stated yesterday with absolute confidence, "You should not be going to an ambulance country on holiday." That's correct. He, yes. he did, and that, that was but his it, advice. But it looks like and quarter that, of a million people are. So I just want to—I want you to explain to me how we've ended up people, in this situation. But, we, we don't know that. I mean, the, the, the point about the argument, your argument, is... I don't that, have an argument. You know, I only you, have questions. No, no you have, you, you're making an argument. You're, no, no, you're, I'm really not. I, 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 I ended my introduction this morning by saying I hate this because I know it's not what you tune in for, but I have absolutely <laughs> no clue what is going on. I do not know how this has happened. That's not an argument, Phil. It, it, you don't it, need a degree well, in philosophy it, to it, understand it, the it, difference it might, between it, an argument and a question, Phil. You're, you're being very sceptical about the claim that, um, or, or, or by, in effect, saying, well, look, on the one hand, 
Johnson says, you know, don't go. Yes. On the other hand, large numbers of people are going to go. And then you're I'm not being sceptical about I'm not being sceptical about that at all. I'm just reading that. Well, I mean, that, that's the basis of your argument. I don't have an but, argument. The, John, no, you're, I just have a question. How have we ended up in a country where a quarter of a million people are heading off to amberless countries, according to the Telegraph, and that Boris Johnson is saying that you absolutely shouldn't, and everybody understands yes. that you shouldn't, because it's very, but, very clear. Well, I'll tell you what, Phil, but let me give you a word of advice. Just... Let me give you a word of advice. Stop analysing me and tell me what Boris Johnson is up to. OK. Boris Johnson is a politician who's giving advice and trying to stay in office. OK? The advice he gives, hopefully, will try to reassure those people who would who'd like to vote for him. That's, that's just the way it is. That's the way that politics and, works. Uh, at risk of sounding rude, do, do you think any of what you just said makes sense? All of it makes sense. I think. Right. I mean, you, 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 you so you're back to, you're back to me again. You want... You're back to me again. I'm interested in what the prime yeah. minister is doing. Even I don't think I'm as important as you do. So Boris Johnson <laughs> is telling people not to go on holiday, but actually expecting them to go on holiday because he thinks that's a vote winner. Well, I'm not sure that he expects it. He, what he wants so what's to do he playing is just put a message Phil? out there to say, advising people not to go unless it's uh, it's an extreme circumstance. But that's not worked. It's two hundred and ten thousand not... people. Uh, judge that you know that that it's important for them to go on holiday or whatever. No, 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 no. You're not allowed to go on holiday. That, that's the guidance. You're allowed to visit like family emergencies and things like that, or a dying relative. The, the categorical message from Boris Johnson, which he claims is very, very clear, and you're here to support him. Even you don't understand the bloke ringing the radio to say it's very, very clear has just got even more confused than the prime minister. Is. Well, I, I, I think you're doing me an injustice there. Well, let's talk about uh, you for a second then. Which bit is clear, do you think? That should you travel to amber countries on holiday or not? Uh, only in extremis. So, no, you shouldn't. So, uh, in, in other words, for holiday purposes, the advice is don't go. Right, yeah. so how come right. a quarter of a million people are going? Obviously, if they it's don't very, very clear. They, 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 uh, maybe they just don't want to. Under, they, they, they don't want to see themselves uh, deprived of their holidays. But it's very, very clear that they shouldn't go on holiday. The prime minister's done a bang-up job of, of of getting that across to the country. Well, uh, apparently not. But it's very, but very clear. <laughs> He wants to. He, is, it, is it not the case? I mean, that he wants to try to move away from sort of rules to advice, and that people taking responsibility for their own actions. Well, he might be trying to pass that off as a policy, but it's not exactly what you'd call the public interest, is it? Personal responsibility is the opposite in many ways of the public interest. People need to be persuaded, cajoled, or ordered to act in a way that is for the benefit of the entire nation. Mm. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, Phil, on a scale of 1 to 10, how clear do you think the messaging is? The, the messaging is clear. Right, the, okay. Uh, the, 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 I really think that. I, I, you know, I, I And at I what point, that, so if, let's that, say 270,000 people haven't got the message, how big would that number have to be before you thought to yourself, guess what, do you know what, James, I, I wonder if that is actually clear. Well... Well, I'm not sure that you can quantify it in that way, can you? Well, you have to at some I mean, point. It... There has to be a threshold after which you would find yourself thinking in Stockport, actually, maybe it's not that clear after all, because uh... X number of people clearly haven't got the message. Well, you know, there are there, there, there are many examples of, uh, of, uh, of clear, clear guidance from government. For Go example, on. you know, don't smoke, and there are millions of smokers. Yes. So, I mean, there isn't a but they, they also, Well, there is. Between, they also brought in smoking bans in public. There's also bans in, in many public places where you're not allowed to smoke. There's no smoking signs all over the place. If you light up a cigarette in, in, in those places, you get your collar felt. Ab absolutely, absolutely. Do you know what, Phil? But, I can see, see why... There isn't a direct correlation between the clarity of the message and people's willingness to accept the message i act on it. Yeah, I, 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 I hope you've enjoyed this call, Phil. Anthony's in Croydon. Anthony, what do you reckon? Hello, James. I'm a first-time caller, long-time listener. I, I believe that's the phrase. Um, so, yes, I'm of African descent. I just wanted to give a different perspective. I know how you appreciate those around the world coming through with something. Well, you are. You're in it, Croydon. Yes, but I didn't grow up here. Okay. Yeah, I grew up, grew up in Nigeria, which is very different. Um, so, yes, yeah, so basically, um, just want to talk about two points. So, 
so far, and I know you're a big proposer of uh, studies. and I'm also science. a huge, huge um, enemy of people talking more about me than the reason why they phoned into the program. <laughs> okay. So that's, that, 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 that's that your is, first that warning. So you've been on a right. minute and you've not told us anything yet, but do okay, crack on. Okay, okay. So, so you, you get to put up studies that actually purport that vaccine passports actually work. Yeah, so peer, peer review studies, that's one. Two, you called the people who uh, bombed petrol... Uh, police cars as terrorists. I didn't hear any of that talk during the Black Lives Matter protest, even though that was a political uh, demonstration, bombing cars. Yeah, I, did, I did warn you, didn't I? Are we, we going to even pretend to address the conversation that we're having on the programme today or not? No, no, no. no, no I'm, I'm, I, I'm so, vaccinated. I'm not an anti-vaxxer. No, again, I, you've been on for two minutes now and you've not said anything relevant to the phone-in that everybody else is listening okay, to. Okay, 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 okay. Black okay. Lives Matter. Let, 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 let me try this again. I'm just going based on... Final your warning, before. final warning. Say something <laughs> okay. interesting. <laughs> All right, no problem. All right, so my my thing is this, yeah? So we've had vaccine passports all across Europe for the last, what, four or five months? Yes? You'd well, agree with that? Not all across Europe, but I think that they... Well, France, Germany, Italy, They've Spain, had some, yes, yes, I think so. And their, their rates have continued to go up, yeah, regardless, even though, even yes, though they because, have a lot because of... Because they can't have them everywhere. They, they, they can't have them everywhere. You heard the caller from Germany saying that they had a vaccine passport, but you could still go to work. So you could go to work in a restaurant, mm-hmm. but you wouldn't be allowed to eat in there. So because it, the economy would then fail if 20% of the population all of a sudden so, couldn't so, go to work. So, well, I, yes? I, I, well, you keep saying yes in that way that makes it sound as if you think you're saying something clever, but... No, no, no. I'm just Politely, saying that you had, you, you, you had the chance. So the vaccine passport schemes have, yeah. haven't worked because they haven't been stringent enough. No, I'm saying you had the chance to, uh, because you, you had you had called for the NHS workers to be to be either fired or removed. For the ones no, that I hadn't. The I hadn't done that. But again, you're talking about me rather than the no, issues, you, and you're, you you're on your a mind. final warning. You, you, no, but you, you said you. Um, let's start the, the, again, okay? Let's let's pretend yeah. pretend that you just have the floor. Forget okay. about the presenter. The quest, right. the question is, how should vaccinated mm-hmm. people and unvaccinated people be treated differently okay. in order to increase the number of people getting vaccinated? And your suggestion would be what? No, no. My suggestion would be what the, the was written in the CDC, the World Health Organization before the pandemic, which said that vaccination should not be forced or coerced on any part of the population. Yeah. Everything should be done through... Um, everything should be done well, through... Well, it is, uh, you see. So so that's what they're trying no, to do. They're trying they're to find mandated, ways to, to encourage people. Well, no, you think you're the first person to use the word mandate today? No, no, sorry. They, they, they said that it's going to be compulsory in Austria. That's not that's not convincing. You, know, you haven't come so, out so, against So that. the question is, what should be done? And again, well, you're talking you, about no, me no, again, which is a bit no, weird, no, well, actually. Well, okay, wait, listen, listen, so... There's, there's Actually, a pill I, I think I, I... Well, no, carry on. I'll give you one there's more go. Just just, just yes, to have yes. a go. The question's really straightforward. Everybody okay. understands it except so, you. So right, just try so, and answer so, it. So Pfizer and Merck have come out with their pill. It's already available to buy in America right so now. So what, yes? what should, how should people be treated differently according to their vaccination? So you can say they shouldn't be treated differently mm-hmm. at all, and then we can both carry on with the programme. I, I, th- I, think, I think it's up to private businesses to decide how they want to treat people. If they, yes. if okay. they, they, if they put profit above the people... Then that's fine on their on their end. They're doing what's what's going to make their, them and their families happy. Okay. In terms of in terms of the the country, there should be no blanket rule about uh, vaccination status and or not being able to uh, have access to, to public to public. Um, okay. There we go. You see, that wasn't public. so difficult, was it? So you don't think there should be any any measures in place at all that distinguish between vaccinated and unvaccinated people? It's taken no, me nearly eight said, minutes I just, to I just, say I just, that. I just said, I just said as a as a. As a well, that's great. I'm glad, that I'm, I'm, I think you've rewarded my patience. So I'm L- very L- grateful L- to you. Yeah. Thank you. John's in Cork. John, what do you reckon? I think this is a joke. Go on. I think I, I think this understanding Shamima Begin is an absolute joke. I'm Irish. I'm telling you, she's a traitor. Okay. She turned around and well, she joined the country. She joined. She went to a country willingly. Yes. Which executes gays, homosexuals. Not not a country Christians. in the in the conventional sense, but an organisation, a caliphate. You, I'm and glad you mentioned being Irish. Time, you mentioned being Irish. You remember William Joyce? Yeah, Lord Hawker. What happened to him at the end of the Second World War? They hung him. Where? In England. He wasn't even British. No, he was he was Irish, but you know he was a he traitor. Was he was brought back to the UK. He was tried and he was executed here. But you wouldn't have yes. wanted that to happen. You'd have wanted him to be Personally, left. I would, left. I would have, uh, You'd have just left him where he was. He should have been. He should have been shot in the head. No, 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 no. We're talking about what you'd have just left him where he was. You wouldn't have brought him back to Britain so, and punished him. 
yes, but what I'm saying to you is <laughs> that there's this, this... No, no, don't sneer, James. I'm not, I'm giggling. Don't, don't giggle. Well, I, I will giggle. You, I, re, I reserve the right willing. to giggle. It's a great British value. You are willing. Giggling. So girl, you're, saying, you're saying this girl, oh, she's a British citizen, she renounced her citizenship. She joined a caliphate. She didn't renounce her citizenship. When she joined... No, no, she didn't renounce her citizenship. I'm not even sure you can, actually. You're telling me, if you join an enemy country, because the caliphate was... Like like William Joyce did. Like William Joyce did. Yes. Yes. Who we brought back to Britain and executed. We brought him back to Britain and executed after a trial. No, you're standing up for the Nazis, John. You're saying that we shouldn't have done that. We should have left him where he was because he renounced his citizenship when he went off to work for the Nazis. No, I'm saying they should have shot him where he was. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. So you're going to go to Syria now and shoot Shamima Begum? No, I'm not. What are you going to do then? Don't play the... I will leave her there. Okay, just... Just And then we take that precedent, and that's what you would have done to Lord Haw Haw as well, which I think is despicable. He was a disgusting traitor. He should have been brought back to Britain and put on trial. I can't believe you're in favour of letting him go free. No, don't play the tin... No. Don't do this, James. Don't well, try and be smart. I've already done it, John. Do I've, I've already done it, John, and I am. You are for bringing back a girl. You're for letting Lord Haw Haw go free. No, I didn't say that. You did. No, you didn't. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. What I'm saying to you is, are you saying... So, I'll ask you a question. You also said... You said, oh, 15. Right. I'm going to be... Controversial. Are you saying that about the James Bulger's killers as well, one who was caught with child pornography later? The, they, they were on trial, they were put through the legal process, and they were punished accordingly. So you think she they should were treated be differently back, from that? They would have been. They were treated differently from how they would is have been if they'd been adults. So what? What is point? Do, no, no. Like, I want to examine all of these brilliant is points she a you're traitor, making. James, ask I, me, answer me the question. I don't. Do I don't know. That's why she should be put on trial, just like William Joyce was, who you think should have been let free. No. I don't think he should have been left free. Well, why don't you want her to be put on trial? My attitude is this. She abandoned... You have, you have, to, answer, you have to answer at least one of my questions at one point. Why don't you want I her to be put... The question. Why you don't you want her smart. to be put on trial? I have no problem with her being put on trial. Oh, well, finally, we agree. Bob's in Leighton Buzzer. Bob, what would you like to say? Uh, I just don't think you should completely rubbish... Uh, the deal went, uh, first exit. Is that a full moon at the moment? Eh? Is that a full moon at the moment? No. No? All right, don't miss that first exit. I'm not rubbishing the trade deal with no, India. I'm, I'm explaining not, that the I'm desperation not, to not, sign it... What? And I started again, but I've stopped again Okay, now. mate. Well, hang on. We'll... we'll it's, it's, it's almost like a... I'm waiting for Anton Deck to come into the room this morning. Seriously. Marcus is in Northampton. Marcus, what do you reckon? I think you're kind of looking at it in the wrong way, to be fair. Okay. I think it's a matter of uh, supply and demand. Yes. If, you, if you've got less people coming into the country, obviously minimum wage and living wage is going to go up. And then once we've kind of leveled things out, I think we can start inviting people. We'd look like an attractive place to come when the wages are higher. Well, not if you're not allowed to. Well, I'm sure things will start relaxing as, as and when we need more things in the future. Well, we need but it now. We can get... Well, I understand we need them now, but, you know... Well, that's, the, que- that's the question time. I'm asking. If they announced now that we're going to reopen the borders that you voted to close in order to raise the minimum wage, would you be all right with that? No, I didn't want the floods more of people coming in and then the living wage doesn't go up. But what about all I the shortages, start, mate? Well, I think we've just got to buckle up and, and deal with it. Well, just just live with the shortages? Live with the shortages. Did you, no not, reason did you ever think of voting up. for a party that was going to raise the minimum wage instead? It wasn't really on the table at the time, and more like it was Brexit at the well, time. It was in 2015, and it wasn't even in 2017. Well, the area that I just wanted to go in, as, as a, I looked at it in a business way, if there's less people coming into the country, then more wages are going to go up. It's, yeah. make, it's forcing people. There's so many empty promises coming in. So why are there so many shortages then now? Why are there so many shortages? We need to start. We haven't looked at infrastructure, even looking when you were talking about uh, lorries earlier, yeah. with the infrastructure of lorries. You know, we've, we've got, you know, more people coming into the country. We haven't really looked at it as a trade, and we haven't pushed people into it. So but, I but why, are there so many shorti- want... why are there so many shortages? Because we haven't been investing in our, in our, in our people in our own country. Right. We've been get, so what, are the, what are the people that would, should be driving the lorries doing now? And... Well, I, I don't know, but we've got well, to get You have to know, because you told working. me I've got it wrong. Okay, then we've got to start getting people to, to work. We've got to get people into this and look, not well, looking at people, like lorry 
lorry drivers. Which, which people, people? Are out of work. People so the, the unemployed, but you want the unemployed people to be trained to drive lorries. Yes. Why? Why not? Why okay, can't? Why we? do you think they're not doing that already? A universal the credit is the, is the lowest that it's ever been. Because so it's the money's the money's terrible. I've got um, a cleaner at my house, and her husband's a lorry driver. He says by the time he worked out all his hours, he's better off um, working. He's getting less than the minimum wage. So how is that right? Well, why does he do it then? Because it's a job. He wants to work. People but, don't want to. But, the, wa- but the but the wages have gone up already, and we've still got loads of shortages. Well, that's because it's short term. Why didn't you vote? Why didn't you vote for? Why didn't you vote for a party that promised to protect workers like your cleaner's husband? Because uh, at the end of the day, I don't believe in Labour. I didn't really like the Labour Party. It doesn't have to be the Labour Party. It's just you could vote Uh, for the things that you want to happen instead of voting for shortages that you think everybody else has to suck up. If everyone's promising that, never these things don't happen. Okay. So how long? How long? Just just to 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 be clear, before you. before you no, go, wages that, are going to go no, up. They don't. Yeah, yeah. No, I understand. I understand everything you said. Forcing but the hand. It is forcing the hand. But before you go, thanks for clearing that up and setting me straight. How long do we have to suck up the shortages for before uh, it's okay, as a businessman, before it's okay for um, us to open the borders again? I, I, I don't know. Well, don't roughly, just you personally, not not for the whole country, just bad. just just for you I personally. Think, I don't think it's as bad as everyone's going on about anyway. I think it's a lot of it is scaremongering. Do you? The papers print, the papers print, oh, we're going to have shortages, we're going to have but, shortages. But they're the papers the that persuaded know. you to vote for Brexit, mate. Why don't you, no, why don't you the trust them now? The no, no the papers, you did your own research, didn't you? Pardon? You did no, your own I watched, research. I watched, like, Question Time. Yeah. I watched, I, I so just just for you personally, right. how long do you think we have to endure the real shortages, not the made-up ones, but the real shortages that are happening now, the ones that are being reported by... I'll introduce you to a turkey farmer in half an hour, and he'll like, tell like you what? What, what's what, what, happening what on his, his farm, labour shortages. How long do we what? have to suck them up for before we'll sort of... before? And what I hate to put shortages? it like this. I, I, I'm sorry, what? Because a couple of lorries are not being driven. We've got a massive oh, okay. shortage. I did, I did say that this. I did say that this exercise wouldn't work with people who were denying the existence of reality. Didn't no, I? No, I do believe that we should have people in. I'm no, no, no. But you're denying myself. the existence of shortages. But so there's no point us talking yet. Give me, ring bad. me back in a couple of months, okay? And then, then perhaps we can do this a little more constructively. But, but the. I'll tell you now, and I'll tell you for nothing, the British media's dedication to both Brexit and Boris Johnson is such that they report the reality of shortages through gritted teeth. Gritted teeth, Marcus. So for you to sit there and say, oh, I don't believe it all, is, with the greatest of love and respect, absolutely ridiculous and profoundly unhelpful because until you acknowledge that the problems exist, how can we move together towards fixing them? John's in Chelsea. John, what would you like to say? I'm for the passport to travel abroad to say, yes, you've had the jab and you can travel abroad on holiday or whatever. Yes. Um, The actual certificate, badge, whatever you want to call it, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Providing it just says, I have had the jab and I'm up to date with it. Yeah. What other information, it should not have any other information other than that. And then, who has got access to that information? What, what, well, unfortunately, the Test and Trace app, which you may not have downloaded, already has access to the information of where that device has been. Although Yes, but it you worked. can turn that off. Yes, you can, and you could do the same with this. It just means yes. if you've turned it off, you can't go into those places. So what information is it that you're worried about, if, if that's well, the right word? You know what I mean. Person, if you're an immoral person and yeah. you decided to have an affair with somebody and you turn around and said to your partner, wife, um, I've gone up to Blackpool, for instance, when really you've gone into central London for a theatre and a meal. And your wife's like not going to be able to log on to it, mate. Don't no, worry. But then if there's a crime in that area... Yeah. Would the police be able to turn around and say, well, hang on a minute, we need witnesses for that. They they already can. They can do that with GPS, I think. Yes, but they can't. If they turn around and then contact you directly saying, well, hang on a minute, your app on track and trace said you were in this area. Okay, right. So your concern is, if I sign up for this and I tell my wife I'm in Birmingham when I'm actually in Basildon, and then there's a massive crime in Basildon, will the police be able to access a list of all the people that were in Basildon and then contact them one by one to see if they saw the crime? Well, they can do that on your phone. Well, they can't, though. I I don't know that they can. I mean, they can if they're looking for you specifically. If if, if they suspect you of the crime and they get hold of your phone, then I think they can 
triangulate your GPS to find out if you were where you said you were. But I'm not currently, and I could be wrong, John, because I lead a life of such uh, eminent legality that I'm not fully aware of the of the ins and outs of this. But I'm not currently aware of any process by which, if they're looking for witnesses, they can access a list of everybody whose phone was in that area and then contact them individually and directly. Yeah, no, but this could be a way for them to do that. You did just say, yeah, no, but. Yeah, but this could be a way. They well, could I, I, do I, I that. think your point has got a touch of the Vicky Pollard to it, as is demonstrated by the yeah, no, but. It wouldn't be. Okay. So I give you a pledge that the police won't do something they could currently do anyway in the event of this new certificate being introduced. Because they yeah. could currently do it anyway. So why would they wait for a vaccine certificate to do something they could do anyway? Because you could claim that somebody else has got your phone. Well, you could do that now. Yes, but if you've got a certificate... On your phone. And on your phone. Yes. So we can work both ways. Yes, I don't know. I don't, it's perfectly possible I've misunderstood you. I don't think that I have, but... You're right. I guess one flaw in this proposal could be that Keith has had all the vaccines. He's got vaccines coming out of his ears. And I haven't because I'm too lazy or, 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 or I'm weird or I'm up to no good. And I could just nick Keith's phone. And yet, but, yeah. then, but then you've got thumbprints. It's quite hard to open people's phones these days. Not, not all of them, but most of them. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, again, you're on the list. But I don't think that those concerns are, are... I mean, what is it you're up to, John, that you're so keen to keep shtum about? Three o'clock today, so I'm going to have my jabs. Yeah. And I'll be quite happy to carry around the certificate or badge to say I've had my jab. And where does the wife think you're going to be at three o'clock today? <laughs> Hopefully she's going to be with me because she's taking me. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel is in Manchester. What do we reckon, Rachel? To sack or not to sack? That is the question. Well, obviously he shouldn't have been sacked. People are just being hysterical. What do they want? Do they want to fl flog him in the street? Well, no, no, no we don't want to flog him in the streets. Don't go all tabloid well, on me on the first. Well, the question is, should we sack him, not should we flog him in the streets? Do me well, a flavour. They need to give the heads a wobble. No, they shouldn't have been sacked. First really? of all, there's employment laws to follow. There are a couple of, like, you know, honestly, I thought dreaded seeing the video because I thought it was some kind of just trying to beat the guy up or something, right? I saw the video and I thought, really? Obviously, it was uncomfortable viewing and, you know, and it wasn't the right thing that they... You know, they're wrong. They, they were drunk and trying to get a picture. Same as Guy Patelli, blah, blah, blah. But they weren't being nasty. They were in high jinx and they were just being silly. And, you know, Chris Whitty himself, but, you know... Yeah, is, but they really... Uh, you've, see, you've seen the footage, haven't you? You're not yes, just going... I've yeah, seen, well, I mean, oh, no, Whitty, no. Whitty looked deeply discombobulated. Oh, he absolutely did, bless him. He did. But even he, the person it's happened to, is, is an intelligent man and, and, and is reasoned enough to say, you know, he's, he's actually said they'll probably grow up to be fine standing citizens. He said that. Because they probably will. They, they, you know, goodness me, they've had a few drinks and they've been a bit silly because they've seen a famous person. Let's get over it. Let, you know, let, let's just be real here. And that employer is ridiculous. Yeah, just because it's um, it's, cause it's all in the media and everything and you're worried about your reputation. No, call the guy in, give him a warning, talk to him about behaviour and how it reflects on your company, whatever, that's fine. You just don't go sacking people. Like, just for public well, opinion, well, it's, it's beyond. I, okay, I mean, a strident point well made. I, 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 I kind of still sit probably 52, 48 on this one, but what, what if, what, what about looking at it from the client's point of view? If, if you were being shown around the house by that bloke and you recognised him, that arguably is doing, and you recognised him and thought, I don't really want to spend, I don't want to be on my own in a house with this bloke. Um, well, that's just being ridiculous. Why, what, is what, it being, um, why is it being ridiculous? Well, if someone has, well, tell, show me any 20-odd-year-old young person who has had a few too many drinks, including the person being so round. It's just, like, ridiculous. I mean, for God's sake, you know, <laughs> what, what, who's standing moral authority on everything? Jeez, you know. God, he's had a Get few off drinks, the fence. Been... Get off the hey. fence, will you, Rachel, and say what you think. <laughs> 20 minutes after 11 is the time. The voice of Manchester. Maggie's in Letchworth Garden City. Maggie, what would you like to say? Um, before I do say anything, I just want to address that I I totally understand the other side of the argument, yes. but I'm def I definitely do think it's fair. Okay. Um, now, I don't come from um, 
you know, a sil- I have never had a silver sp- spoon in my mouth. You mm. know, I, I, I worked damn hard and I worked. I've got a little alarm bell there. I'm sorry to jump on you already, but lots and lots of people who are not remotely wealthy work damn hard as well. So I, don't, yeah. I just, I think in these conversations, I always bridle slightly at the uh, idea. Absolutely. And absolutely. I know you know that. I know you know that. But I worked hard for a better life for myself. Yes. Okay. Because I came, I was one of seven. We came here with no, absolutely nothing. And I wanted a better life for myself. So I worked extremely hard. And, and okay. again, I am going now to I, remind you, there's people I over do, there I, who work extremely hard just to survive. No, absolutely. Absolutely. But I survived by working three, four, five time jobs. Four, three, three, four ti- uh, jobs at a time for a better life for me. Okay. okay. Now... I'm just going to give you a little example of my mother-in-law, who equally had worked all her life, as did my father-in-law, an ex-serviceman, and they owned a property. Sadly, my mother-in-law had to go into care. We lost my father-in-law a long time previously to that. And um, we were spending over £7,000 a month for her care in the southeast of England. Okay, so... After her, her life savings had been, we had to sell the home. Okay, she was in there for nearly, it was a long time. Okay, there was barely £100,000 left. And after, you know, I won't go into detail of what, what happened, but now the lady next door to her, who had never owned a property and never worked a day in her life, had got that care for absolutely nothing. Yeah. Now, this is my argument. I would be in the same position if I, you know, if we, you know, we currently stay at what we currently do now. We, we would have nothing left. Now, I haven't worked hard for my children to get absolutely nothing. No. Well, I, I equally, again, the, the, equally, we use the example of no. the lady in the next bed. That That's a bit a little disingenuous because there'll be lots and lots of people who've worked every day that God sends who haven't ended up with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of assets. And under what you're proposing, why, why just let me... Problem? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll, well, I, I mean, you may not think it's a problem, but I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what I was going to say next, which is very simply that the person over there on minimum wage is paying income tax and they're not going to need any social care at all. And yet their income tax is paying to allow you to keep the money that you would otherwise be paying on your mother-in-law's social care. So that person, that bus driver over there or that serviceman over there, that police officer over there, that nurse over there, they're not going to need social care. They get lucky when that lottery, that bit of the lottery of life comes around. They, they, they don't need hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of social care, but they're going to have to pay for your mother-in-law's and they don't even own a home. If you talk about my mother, my mother-in-law. Well, you did, me, Maggie. Not, 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 no, you no, did, not me. No, well, then we'll give you the example. Talk about my future. Yeah. Okay. I've worked hard. Yes, I've got assets to the value of, you know, I might have a, a property worth X, Y, Z, but I certainly don't, don't look at myself as being rich. No, but richer I than the people over there rich. who don't have any assets. Well, why? So, and their income so tax will be my... paying for your social care. No, look, let well, me... Yes, let me it just, just will. I mean, that's why, not an argument. That's a why? fact. No, and I e- equally... Why should they pay healthy, for your social care? If you, if you can pay for it yourself, they would say. So and in why fact, why don't you answer that? Why, why, why don't you answer why that? Should, why should I pay for theirs? Well, they're paying for their own as well, through their yeah, taxes. But, yeah, I know, as I would. Yes, too. but they're paying as for I yours, and they don't even have any money. No. So why, I, why I, should I, that you... person over there, who has no assets at all, pay for your social care that you're unlucky enough to need later in life while you keep a million pounds in the bank? But what if I didn't need social care? Then you don't have to pay for it. Exactly. <laughs> that's, not, that's not an answer to my I question. Get, you no, can't just say exactly. What you've got to understand <laughs> no, no, what you need to do penalized. now, what you need to do now is tell me why that person there with no assets who doesn't need social care should pay for yours while you keep your assets. That's all. I just want you to just, uh, that, that, that is the fact of the matter. That's the scenario I'm presenting you with. You said you didn't want to talk about your mother-in-law, so we'll talk about you. Here is somebody who works 50 hours, 60 hours a week just to make ends meet on minimum wage. They've worked for 50 years, man and boy, woman and girl. They've got no assets at all at the end of it. And you think they should pay for your social care rather than you? through their taxes rather than your assets. I just want you to tell them why. 
Well, if you reverse that... No, no, you have to at least at one point in this conversation address the question I'm asking you. So just tell them why they should pay for your social care while you get to keep keep all the money you've got. Well, currently, I'm going to... It's the total opposite of what you're currently saying. I'm going to insist that you're explaining to them now why they should pay for your social care while you get to keep all your money. That's the world you're, you're seeking to live in. I just want you to explain to them why you think that's fair. If you look at why it was introduced, no, being gonna, introduced, I, look, I can't do this six times. Don't make, don't, 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 don't make me. That's don't, why. Okay. No, so I'm going to ask you again to why. explain to them why you think that's fair. So 50 hours a week for 50 years, no assets at all at the end of it, but their taxes are going to pay for your social care while you keep a million quid in the bank. Just tell them why it's fair or how it's fair. Look, I'm not being unfair by saying what I'm going to say. Go on then. But. Why is it unfair? That's a question, not an answer. Okay. Well, I'll tell you why. Yeah. I've worked damn hard. So have they. And, yeah, but I've equally worked. No, they've worked harder, actually, under my why scenario. Why they work Well, the same reason why? you're saying that you've worked damn hard. I'm just making up my facts to fit the story. They've worked much harder than you. What, why do they? I don't know why. I, they just did. You don't know how hard I worked. No, I know, but you don't know how hard they've worked. So we're playing the same game now. I'm saying they worked harder than you. What? Okay, I'm going to reverse this question to you. But then it becomes a question, me... not an answer, doesn't it? So tell okay, them why well, it's fair for them to pay for your social care while you keep a million quid in the bank. That's all you have to do. It's easy. Because currently, if yes. I've got a million pounds in the bank and they haven't got a penny, I'm paying for their care. No, but they've paid their income tax all their lives. So have I. Yeah, exactly. So you're equal on that front, but you get to keep a million quid while they pay for your social care. But then... Why would they have to pay for my social because care? Because they've paid income tax all their life, and that's the pot that your social care is going to come out of. Yeah, but equally, I'm paying into it. <laughs> yes, but I'm you haven't paid enough to cover your social care. You're going to have to take money from people that have paid income tax but don't need social care, and that's this chap over here who's worked much harder than you for 50 years but has no assets. So why should his tax pay for your social care when you've still got a million quid in the bank? I think you, what you're not getting, equally, <laughs> I've worked extremely hard. Yes, but I he's worked harder. Nothing. He's worked I harder. From, no, how has he worked harder? Tell me, how has he worked harder? He, he, he worked 18 hours work. a day in a coal mine. Okay, that's different. Okay, that's different. But yeah. can I just say what I've done? I've worked... And then, and then, he, did, and then he did a shift in then a supermarket. I've a second job. Yes, I know, no, but, but, but we're playing I'm a just, silly I game now, of, Maggie. No, we're, no. We are. What we're, you're saying is people that Do you know why you're not answering my question? Why? Because it's not fair. No, it's, it is fair. I'm All right, well, tell him why it's fair, fair then. Go on, it's easy. Go on, tell I'm him why it's sick. fair. I'm absolutely sick to okay. death. Go on. Okay, I see how society lives. Okay, I'm go. absolutely sick to death. Yeah, of scroungers. People the, uh, yeah, no, not scroungers. What then? Uh, listen, yes. my parents are not scroungers, and they work, and they live in the north of England, and yes. they don't own a home worth what mine is, because I live in the south of England. Okay, yes, I paid more. Okay, but they would have to. Do, if you look at the poorer end of the spectrum, which yeah. I would put my parents down as, if my parents had to pay more, why should any? Uh, that's their. If they're in a care home. Oh, listen, I don't want to sound rude. Okay, do you think you're making much sense at the moment? No, yes, I am. Okay, well, you, you crack on then. Because you know, can I tell you why I'm making much sense? Only when you've told the other guy why it's fair. Totally Only when you've told the other guy when it's fair. You're totally against what is going to be introduced. You've already made your mind up. I haven't at all. Yes, I haven't expressed just, an opinion. You just said it's really, it's really sad. Yeah, it I is sad. It's lot, sad that this person who owns a, a, a very sad. unexpensive house is going to have to sell it while you're going to be able to keep yours. It makes me sad. I don't, I'd, I'd like everyone to be able to keep their house, but you're supposed to be explaining to the person who's going to have to sell their house because they're look, poor why the that's fair. That's, look, if they own their house, they're not poor. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you, if they own their own property, they Remember are not Remember this began poor. with you insisting that you're not rich? No, I'm not rich. Okay, so you're not rich and they're not poor, but there's a massive gulf between we own the assets. A home. Yes, one worth 60 grand, one worth 600 grand. Okay, so I'll give an example of my mother-in-law again. Yeah, but you didn't she want to talk about her anymore. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm going to go through what's fair. I mean, you what can't. I've taken it. I mean, we've got all the no, way to quarter past look, 12. Talk- I, I can't. I, I mean, goodness me, even I have reserves of patience. And and listen, you, you won't be alone. 
But that, that's the point, you see, Maggie. And, and this wasn't what you intended when you rang in, but that's the calculation Boris Johnson is making, is that people like you will quite like this because it's going to hurt other people. And you will be able to calm your conscience if you have any little suspicions that it's unfair, then you'll be able to say to yourself, well, I work damn hard, you see, as if they don't. So they deserve to have to sell their houses, which are worth a tenth of what your house is worth while you keep yours. Listen, I, I, I don't know what the answer is. But um, I do know one thing. Saying look a lot doesn't make what you're saying any clearer or more persuasive. And Francis is in Pangbourne. Francis, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a very, well, it's a very unfortunate situation. Um, and it doesn't look good for you know, the country, frankly. Um, all the boom is taking place. But I, I have a feeling that the reason why it's continuing is because the, um, the kneeling before games, I think, restarted as soon as football restarted back in August or July or whatever it was. And I think a lot of people think, when, when, when does this stop? Um, not that they necessarily think that racism is, racism is not a problem, but would this be an indefinite thing? I mean, that's, I think that's the lack of clarity on that, I think, is what's getting a lot of people so angry. Well, don't talk to me about a lot of people. Just talk to me about yourself. Well, that's exactly what I believe. So you, I mean, you, you, I, I, you, just, you think we've, we've, we've had enough of it now? Well, no, that's not the point, really. The point is that Sorry. I think there are a lot of people who would say... But no, again, you're doing it, sorry to badge you, but I don't want to hear from a lot of people. It's a one-on-one it's a, okay. on -one conversation. You feel that it should stop now because it's gone on for long enough. I think that it has to stop at some stage. Yes. Maybe not now, but I have a feeling that... Would you boo if you were there? No, of course I wouldn't. Well, why did you I, say I it like that? Why did you say, of course I wouldn't? Well, because that's what I feel. But you, you share the, the views of the people that are booing. You, you're explaining them to mm. me. No, I didn't. I said that I think at some stage it should stop. Yes. And I think that the problem is... And the people who are booing are, are booing because, like you, they believe that at some stage it should stop. Uh, <laughs> yes, but I said I wouldn't boo, so there's obviously a complete distinction there. What's the difference between um, you and them? I wouldn't boo, they are booing. Yes, I know. What's the difference between you and them? The difference between me and them is yeah. that, well, in terms of the booing, it's because I wouldn't boo, they would boo. I can't, again, you, you, you say you don't want me to talk about lots of people. No, I don't. I, don't. I mean, I'm not, it's not, I'm not being un, 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 unfair. I, I'm, there's no point you telling me what other people think when this whole phone-in is built upon the idea of if I walk into a room and you're kneeling, I can't tell you why you're kneeling. I can only ask you why you're kneeling. And the footballers say we're, we're kneeling to express our opposition to racism, our solidarity with the idea, with the statement that black lives matter, to which my response is, well, flipping, you carry on, lads, for as long as you want, for as long as it takes, for as long as it needs. And your response is, yeah, I'm just going to check the watch and, and, and see whether it's time to withdraw support okay, for this. If I, if I could ask you a question. Yeah. If, this, if, if, if they were still taking the knee before football matches in three years' time, yes. would you think that that would be okay? No, it would never enter my mind that there was a time limit on the fight against racism. No, but if I had to ask uh, well, you... Well, no, let me, sorry, I've, I've done you a disservice there. Uh, it, it, yeah, if, if the battle had been won. So what would the battle have been one mean? Well, then you'd have to ask them, wouldn't you? Well, I'm asking you, though. OK, like, well, it would, it would involve uh, a confidence that institutional racism or um, persistent discrimination or uh, double standards no longer applied across huge swathes of the country. It would also be nice to stop seeing black people getting killed by white police officers. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, no, well, what no, would it be for you? When would you? When would you think it was time up? Well, I just think I just think it's a question of proportionality. I think yes. that we've now been we've now had the kneeling for a year, and I. I it's look, just I yes. So, so, you so I don't understand why you were cross when I said you think it's gone on for long enough. No, I, I think I, what the main reason I called in was to say, I think that a lot of people have a feeling that this is never going to end, and I think that is what is causing. Well, how do you think being a victim of racism feels? No, I'm not denying that that's no problem. Or no, but just in the context of, of being slightly annoyed that this is never going to end, you're comparing people watching kneeling to people enduring racism. I mean, no, I, it's never going to end. Pick a side. Who, who do you feel sorriest for? The people who have to keep watching these flipping footballers kneeling or the people who have to keep living with institutional racism? It's, it's a question that... There, is, there are many ills in society. Yes. And we, we, we we've drawn enough end. attention to this one now. Let, let's move on to another one. Which one would you move on to first? Well, what do you want? Should we, should we say sexism? I mean, this is not, this is not a question of who, who is the most oppressed. Well, it kind of is, because you're saying how long is it going to go on for? To which the answer would be when there is uh, presumably either meaningful progress or 
may the day dawn soon. No, no oppression at all. And, and I stress again for anybody else waiting to talk, don't tell me what you think other people think. You know, T tell me... Tell, well, no, you can tell me what you think other people think, but I, I'm more interested in what you think. And, and the question where you can tell me what other people think is now that the players have explained, now that it has been explained, crystal clear why they are doing it, how come anyone could still boo? Um, first answer, because it's gone on for long enough. Um, Peter is in Croydon. Peter, what would you like to say? Oh, good morning, James. Uh, yeah, you said earlier that you know at least three people... No, not me, um, Peter. It's the political editor of the ITV, the political editor of the BBC and the editor of the Daily Mail. Excellent. Well, OK, they haven't been mentioned yet. So up until the point that those sources have been mentioned, isn't that equivalent to fake news? No. Why? Well, it's, not, we, it's not authorised. Well, no, you can accuse them of lying. Of course you can. You're perfectly entitled no, no, to I'm do not, that. No, no, I'm not even saying they're lying. Well, well then, it, then lying. it's not fake news then, is it? No, no. Up until the point that someone is, not, is named, it's not even worth talking about. Yesterday, a guy accused why, you why, of something. Why the Electoral Commission? Why the Electoral Commission? investigating. Well, they haven't mentioned the source. And also, listen, I mean, I I mean, I'm going to go back to the call yesterday, because I, I, it, it, you yeah, mention it. Yeah. If, if I had been having suicidal thoughts, it wouldn't be an no, accusation. I'm not, saying, I, I'm not saying that, James. No, I'm no, but that. that's I'm what the caller it. yesterday said, and it, I'm in a really uncomfortable yeah. position, because that shouldn't be an insult. Our man yesterday, Mike in Ware, clearly thought it was, and there's some nonsense about me on some Facebook page somewhere, and I'm uncomfortable being this self-referential. But I, I but took a, I, there was a... No, you need to yeah. listen, because you've brought it up now, yeah. and I, and I didn't. Go, go, go. So using the word accusation there is, is horrible because what he did, and I hope it was unintentionally, was kind of make the case that if I had, and quite why my mental health would be suffering during what has been by far the most incredible period of my entire career is a question that probably hasn't been answered on whatever weird Facebook page he's knocking about on. It can't be seen as an insult or an accusation. Peter, to, to, to accuse somebody, to accuse somebody, to use your own that's word right. of that, having that. That's so what I'm saying, yeah, 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 what I'm saying, that's not even the, the, the issue for me. Well, that's, the issue, that's for the me issue is this, right. Right. Our sources that, yes. aren't, that aren't identified, it's equivalent to fake news. That's no, what but, Trump but it, was talking but about. No, but it and really isn't. A Trump supporter. No, it really, I, I'm no, not even no, a Trump you can supporter, keep talking, right? Peter, but, but, but you're not making any sense because... But nor are you. No, I am, Peter, because you have... You're sources that aren't mentioned. So what is that? All the TV programmes and radio stations are based on nonsense. So when will, when will Boris Johnson sue? Evidence? When will he Where sue? When will he Where sue? When will he sue? Why should, why should he take part in that debate? It's a false debate. When will he sue? You voted for the Iraqi war, right, on no evidence. Nobody, voted. Nobody voted for the Iraqi war except people in Parliament. Did and you not say that you well, why, are we, why are we talking about the, the Iraqi war? war? Because there was no evidence. Again, you have a situation of no evidence. Right. If you've got a source, and name the source. Why okay. do you keep talking about sources that aren't... You could say anything. I could say because anything about the minute sources. they're named... They... Anything at all. Yes, of course you could. And if you had double-sourced it as a professional journalist, then you would have a very different case from ringing up a radio station and saying something you've just made up. Johnson. Do you not understand the difference you, between... Please listen for a minute, because I can help you if you let me. Do you understand the difference between professional journalists... No, that's not professional journalism. You're doing down the profession. Why are you saying that? That's not a journalist. No source. Right, OK, no, so... so no source. No source. The, no, yes, source. no I, name. Name the source. Oh, you said... Lord above, Peter. You listen, I, listen, you okay, mentioned you're doffing your cap, you're doffing your Tugging cap. Tugging my forelock. Right? You, you, yeah, 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 yeah. Call it. yeah. I call it kneeling or bowing or whatever you want to call do. it. What you want? I'm just explaining to you how the world works. You, the world doesn't work the way you'd like the it to The difference work. between three no extremely news, prominent journalists... News, no newspapers, prominent. There oh, you go again, Christ. leading down to people again, because they're prominent. Where is the source? Simply name the source. The That's source the is in Downing Street. Every there are, there are, are three read. people in Downing Street contacted independently by three journalists. You can respect them or not respect they're them as much as you please. It's the source. What is the name you, of the source? You know what I'm talking about. I don't know right? what you're talking Well, I know what you, you think you're educated. talking about. No, you think Everything you've got some be, sort of zinging point here because I'm not going I to say the name. Point. No, I know I you think you have. And if you, you listened for a minute, you, I can't argue if Sorry. I can't speak, Peter. But Sorry, if you I'll, listened I'll, for a minute, I'll tell you exactly what happened at the Daily Mail on Sunday. Shall yes. I? 
when, I mean, when they were making the decision on whether or not to splash with this story for Monday, okay, lawyers came in to the process. Exactly the same thing happened at ITV. Exactly the same thing happened at the BBC. And the lawyers said, before we go public, public with this story, we need to check this, 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 and this. We need to establish that the story is double-sourced. We need to establish our faith in the integrity and the probity of those sources. And we need to establish our trust in what those sources are telling us. And all three sets of extremely highly paid, highly respected lawyers, so forget about the journalists, they all concluded that the criteria for publication had been met. Does that help you understand? I've got a horrible feeling it doesn't. No, no, no. Where, what is the name of the source? Oh, With okay. all of that... It's, a, it's a HP, mate. David's in Islington. David, what do you reckon? Good morning, James. Hello. Boy, you're a little bit feisty this morning, aren't you? I wasn't planning on it, mate, but you know how it is. You like, you like the blue touch paper, I go off like a Catherine <laughs> wheel. <laughs> um, we've spoken before. Uh, I work in hospitality recruitment. Previous to that, I was in hospitality for 30 years. So I've been in and around it all my adult life. Now, I can talk about hospitality the day is long because I know it. And it may be the exception to what you're talking about. And mm. incidentally, we have spoken before. I did vote for uh, leave. Um, horrified. I just got a message. I just got a message from someone saying, I'm sitting here trying to work out what name rhymes with Brexit. And then, then, the, then the penny finally dropped. How does Steve rhyme with Brexit? And then the penny finally <laughs> dropped. So we get there in the end. No, never mind uh, that. We're not relitigating uh, that unless, unless you're still in deep denial. No, no. I mean, it, um, but there's several points I want to make. Yeah. First of all, uh, you, 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 you're pinning a loss of this kind of in a binary way. Um, hospitality, I'll give an example of this. One in four job vacancies pre-COVID, pre-Brexit, one in four job vacancies for a skilled worker was a chef position. Yes. It has always been like that. So it well, is. it hasn't, in, in, Again, I, I'm going to do what I did with Steve. I'm going to remind you that although many yeah. sectors persist and exist in a state of permanent shortage, they're never at full capacity. Pre-COVID yeah. and pre-Brexit, you never read about restaurants not being able to open no, because they wouldn't. didn't have the staff. And we are reading no. about that now. So the question is about the unique problems we are currently facing. It's not about what the situation no, was three years you, ago. You can't say, James, that the industry wasn't warm. It's always been like this. There's always been the state of... But the people in charge said there was nothing to worry use. about. Um, yeah, I beg to differ because I have a business based on it. No, no, no. The, well, the, the people much. in charge, when they were warned about what would happen if we cut off the supply of labour, the people in charge said, don't worry, we'll be fine. Yeah, no, don't get me wrong. I'm not going to defend Brexit, not by a long chalk. And to be honest, Lord Frost saying he wants to go back and renegotiate the Northern Ireland Protocol... These guys don't get it because they've never really had proper jobs. I sit down. He was the chief deals. executive of the Scotch Whiskey Association, I believe. An association, not an actual business. No. Not an actual business where his livelihood depended on it. He was a, an association of a group of companies that none of them were answerable to him. They didn't have to. He, he was also a fairly adamant Remainer when he was in that role. Although it's it's amazing how the world turns. Yeah. So I, I, listen, I am being a bit. Uh, insistent today on on actual yeah. human beings. So you've mentioned Lord Frost. He's not to blame. Yeah, so he can't. This, this is and this is a fundamental problem yeah, across on. the board. Liz Truss is another one. These people can't negotiate deals. We should have had business people. And and part of the other problem is that people who voted Remain kind of forget is that. David Cameron said, I'll go back and renegotiate no, my position no, no, with the no, EU. No, 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 Yes, he no, did. No, yes, no, he did. No. And the yes, EU did. turned around and said, yeah, we're not interested. No, and the EU turned there. around and said, David, I hate this, because I honestly thought these battles were over. The EU turned around and said, you already have by far the best relationship as a member state and than any other renegotiate. than any other country in the Union. So we can give you a couple of baubles to take back to Britain, but the idea that you're going to be able to have a unique status denied to yeah. all the other members is pie in the sky. And we yeah. only ended up in that position because so of right-wing media brainwashing people like you that it was actually possible, plausible no, or doable. Yes, mate. So, so, so what, what, what could he have come back part? with? They, 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 the, I hate doing this, mate. Let's not fall out, but I have to ask you the question that I asked yeah. five years ago. What could he have come back with that would have changed your mind? David Cameron? Yeah. He couldn't have come back with anything because... Well, then why bring it up, then? Well, well, for you to negotiate something, you need to have two parties where they can meet 
with a, a commonality. You just said that was part of the problem, so I'm saying what could he have come back with? The fact that he came back with nothing was the problem well, for you, so what could he have come yeah, back with that would so have removed the problem? Back with any number of things Go on, then. which... which which go on then. Which leave we're talking about? And no, gone, Listen, go, go on this then. This is clearly what? a popular thing. What? So whether it's freedom, you know, in inverted commas, freedom of movement, because we still have freedom of movement well, to a degree. Mm, mm, I can still go and work in France if I want. Yes. I can still go and work in Germany if I want. But we're talking about I, why people aren't coming here. So what could David Cameron have come back with that it, would have removed the problem you've described? T- you actually said this yourself the other day. We were talking about hospitality. I'm going to ask you the question again and again and again. Hospitality on the continent is viewed differently to hospitality in the UK. So David Cameron could have come back with a psychological sea change in how we view hospitality in the United well, Kingdom. Come on, David. Come back with, I don't know what he could have come back with. But then why well, is it a problem that he came back with nothing then? No the, myth, no, the point was, to a lot of people, was status quo or change. Because they'd been brainwashed by the right-wing media and didn't possibly, know, didn't know how lucky we were. And you're one of them, mate. No, no, not at all. So what could he have come back with then? Well, I've just explained to you. No, you haven't. Status quo or, or change. So what would change have looked like? He, what could he, he have come back with? What quo. could he have come back with? I don't know. There you go. I really don't know. Couldn't let, tell you. Let, let, like let you I said to you, I'm, I'm not going to defend Brexit. I'm not. You voted for it. Shambles. You voted for it. It's not yeah, been a yeah, shambles. It's it. unfolded exactly as it was. Ago? Five years ago? It's unfolded exactly as it was always going to unfold. No, there were guesstimates. Yes. You could... You could prophesize all you want and turn around and go, yes, you know, this is what's going to happen. Or you but could ask the best qualified ask, people in the world. On Twitter you is, could ask the best qualified people in the world what was going to happen and they'd tell you. Or you could listen to Digby Jones and you listen to Digby Jones. No, I don't listen to Digby Jones. Who did you listen to then? Who did you listen to? Who did you listen to? I went and did my own research. Here we go. That, that's what I did. Okay, but and who I'm wrote the who wrote the, the stuff you researched? No, 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 no. Who wrote the stuff you researched? Who wrote the stuff you researched? Again, that we rejoin the EU. It doesn't matter what I want. I'm interested in what you no, want. No, because well, it's who when you did your own outside. research? Come on, mate. When you did your own research, who were the people that you found most persuasive? I found a consensus of opinion, so I went across. Guardian, the I. Yeah, so what, 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 what was what, what, what was what was the ITF. persuasive points that you researched? What was the stuff that made you go, oh yeah, that's a good idea. I'm definitely going to vote for well, that. I was my my belief was that we could negotiate something. Something. But you can't would, tell me what. That's why I kept saying, what could he have brought well, back? And you said, I don't yeah, know. We, we could we couldn't negotiate a, a decent trade deal. So I can't tell you what it is. I don't know what it looks like. I can't actually put into no, words what it is. I thought we could achieve. We could negotiate a decent trade deal. We could negotiate. Despite the um, fact they said know, we couldn't. It's a system that works for everybody. Right. We don't have that. We, do, we just don't have that. Hey. But getting back to... No, we're to out of time now, mate. We're, we're, we're what, out of time. What do, what do Remainers hope to gain? You can't remain. You, you can't remain in something you've left. I think we need yes, to bring no, back... absolutely, but you I, keep banging the drum. No, well, I'll, so. tell you, I'll tell you, I told you yesterday. So what, what do you I'll tell you, I told you yesterday. Game, James? Liberty of motion. Liberty of motion? Yes, it means that European Union citizens can come and work here... Uh, we won't be able to go and work there, but it's nothing like freedom of movement because we can't call it freedom of movement because then lots of people who still don't understand anything. James. No, we do we not. Ha- well, then where are they all then? They just don't want to come here because <laughs> the problem is cost of living here is expensive, James. Oh, come off it. We're talking about people who live and work well, in Germany, people who live and work in France. Let's not fall out, David. Seriously, mate. I don't, keep, carry on calling well, me. So but to, but wait, when you're you ready, can... when you're ready to smell the coffee, I hope there's someone. No, I hope. Coffee. I hope there's someone here. Brexit, to, but but you are still defending it. You're defending the because mythical you keep Brexit. Into that corner. I've asked you. You're what def- your end game and is. I've told you, we need liberty yeah. of motion. So people can get visas. Not visas. To come and work. Not visas. Well, you can give them a visa if you want, but everyone will be eligible for a visa. We'll do it sector by sector. We'll start with the fuel drivers, then we'll do the butchers, then we'll do the veterinarians, yeah. then we'll do the healthcare well, we workers, the then we'll do the social system. care workers, then we'll do the yeah. chefs, then we'll do the waiters, then we'll do the baristas, yeah. then we'll do the doctors, then we'll do the nurses. We'll do it sector by sector and we'll call it visas. By the time it's ended, it's liberty of motion, which is freedom of movement for everybody else except us. And you voted for it. And when you're ready to smell the coffee, I well, hope you can. I hope you can find someone who will brew it for you. Jarvis is in Worcester Park. Jarvis, what would you like to say? Hello, James. Great show. Love what you're doing. Um, okay. What role did you want to play? I'll be the I'll be the intelligent thirteen year old, which is obviously stretching the bounds of credulity on both fronts. But um, but that that is that is that is the role I'm playing. So you're you're you're. Were you at the protest? 
I was at the protest. Perfect. I, so I, I, why? What was it about? I, I, I'm not sure if it was a protest. I think it was more just a gathering of people getting together and all putting their arms around each other. Man, and saying, I, I got screamed at to take my mask off. I got called sheeple. But I, I wasn't a protester. Right, so what was the march about? And also, why would you be putting your arms around each other with the social distancing re regulations in place? Be because we all love each other. Right. Are you, are, is this a genuine call? Sorry to sound impatient, no, it, but am, it's a really I important genuine. issue. We, we, right. we, were, we, were, we were playing the Oasis music, and it was very happy. About five o'clock, six o'clock in the afternoon, there was a drummer, two guitarists, and about 150 people really having a, a, a happy moment. And the police came along... And yeah, so what was and, the and, what was the march sorry. about? What were you marching for? I, I don't want to hear nonsense about the police instigating the violence, but I, I do want to know well, what they you, did. That's a fact. That's well, a so truth. you love everyone except the police. That's fine. What was the march no, about? Not at all. What no, was I the march about? Everyone. James, hold on. I don't love everybody but the police. What was Stop the march? Words in my mouth. What was the march about? The, the march was about English people on English soil yeah. getting together against the people that seem to be wanting to slowly, but surely, through a United Kingdom system, take away, drip by drip, yeah. slowly take away our rights. What rights? In a manner of... What rights? Well, yeah. the English Constitution, our, our constitutional rights under English law, under God, are Magna Carta rights, okay? Oh, boy. Are you, are you with me? Don't don't just go off and run away, please. I'm not going to run away. I know. On the contrary, what what cons we don't have. So how are you defending we, we Magna Carta? Have, we don't have a constitutional rights. You were no. just about to say it. No, I wasn't. I was about to say we don't have a written constitution, and then I was going to make a slightly a unkind right. observation about people who think the Magna Carta is some form of written constitution. But I sensed in the current conversation that that sort of knowledge would be unhelpful and probably futile to share with you. So what rights is it that you feel are under threat? And you can tell me about the ones, if you want, that are enshrined in Magna Carta. No, nothing's under threat. We've got under... You just told me that they were under threat. No, no, James. In, in perpetuity, which means forevermore, we yeah. have uh, inalienable rights that will never be taken away yeah, because so our Bill of Rights are here So what here was forever. the march about then? The march... No? Oh, come on. I think the line, I mean, obviously the line went down. Jarvis, mate, you were telling me what's under threat, what it is you were marching in defence of or in protection of. Thank you, I was, James. Sorry for get, getting cut off there. That gentleman's not being very fair on me by saying, is it about, barking on about this Magna Carta bleep. Hang on. Well, you were. We, 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 hang on, guys. What you're doing is... <laughs> can you just tell me what you were there for, please? Uh, well, I was there you, for, yeah. because I'm entitled to be there. My Bill of Rights and the Acts of Settlement, which are ancient English laws, enable me to do what I want, to go where I want, right. when I want. No lockdown, no restrictions at any point on my freedom in any way. Are you allowed in all. the Are you allowed in the gorilla enclosure at London I, Zoo? I can go where I want. I can come up to LBC, walk into your offices, sit on your radio show, yes. and conduct a, a show much better than you. Well, you're welcome to try, but are, are you allowed into the gorilla enclosure at London Zoo under the Bill of Rights that you're describing? You're already in there. I can't fit in there because you're in it. Yes, I know you are, but what am I? You, you're just... You'll so be what were you, what were you and, there and for? And resorting to low-level... You know what you're doing? You just called me you a gorilla. You, you know what you're doing? You're, you're, you're no, doing I, very I'm, I'm smart, retaining epic passionate. amounts of patience with a deeply, deeply deluded individual. And I'm that's, not that's, deeply deluded. Well, no one who is deeply deluded fascist. think they are. That's what the and words we mean. we are going to take back our country and you From are the whom? fascist. From whom? From you and your court systems, your CPS, your corrupt police. You're right the way up to the top. We and are how, coming how, to take a, back a, our country, on a scale and of, you well, I'll, I'll are put the fascist. kettle on. I'll put the kettle on. On a scale of one to ten, how involved am I? Am, am I personally in the takeover well, of the country? Where are you? We might we might decide to put you in a gorilla cage for real once yes. we take back the country. Yes, because you are a fascist. Slow, well, you keep saying that. I'm just no, I'm just wondering no, what what, what my level of involvement is. Why didn't you come to our, our protest? Why didn't you join the, the crowd? Well, I, if I knew what it was about, I might be able to answer the question. Do, what do was it about? Part of, do you not think you're part of us? I don't know what you're talking about, John. Are you part of the English people? Are you with us? Or are you with us? I mean, you, you personally? You think that you're, you're so much better Mate, than us. You, you personally, I'd cross the M25 on foot to avoid. But if you're speaking about some sort of collective movement, I want to know what it represents. You'll find out. Well, I know. Tell me. 
but you're not part of it. Right. So what we're doing in the background is slowly building and building and building, and all you're doing is sitting back and working with the mechanism that have COVID-19... Well, oh, thank you, Jarvis. I must say, I preferred your early work. Danny's in Chigwell. Danny, what made you pick up the phone? Hi, James. Oh. Um, I, I think it's, if, if I can briefly make three points, uh, I think it's clear to all of us, and I think you've just touched on it, that there's got to be proportionality. You can't just say the ends justify the means. No. Uh, I was thinking of, you know, maybe an illegal search where a mass murderer is brought to justice. I think all of us would turn morally a blind eye to the so-called illegal well, search. Well, hang on. Uh, except that it would possibly blow the court case out of the water. Well, I'm saying morally. You know, yes. legally I understand fully that, yes. unfortunately, that case would fall you, apart. You and I wouldn't but, lose any sleep at night if, if, if no, a exactly, proven exactly, child murderer exactly. was misled into confessing. Precisely. Yes. But I think here it, it, it would appear, if these allegations are true, which they appear to be... But they are. There's no doubt about that. They're well, all, I mean, okay, it is true. So, OK, so vast, vast amounts of so-called evidence uh, were corruptly manufactured. That's, that's number one. Well, it's hang on. Again, team, sorry. No, not, va not, not vast amounts. Not vast public money. Not vast um, amounts. Just, just a couple of bank if, statements. If, it, if the BBC is using public money, it needs to be holier than holy Absolutely. and be fully accountable. Yeah. So where, where were the checks and balances within the BBC's organisation? And thirdly it brings into account the whole impartiality of the BBC. So, uh, you know, again, you've, you've mentioned, well, you've mentioned Fox News. Yes. I would say if you pick up the Daily Mail or you pick up the Guardian, yes. I can pretty much classify one is, is to the right of centre, one is probably to the left of centre. I don't agree people. with you, actually, for, for the record. Well, I, I don't, I don't, I, I mean, let's... OK, well, let, let's, if we agree to differ on that, I think well, we can all kind agree. Of, it's kind of important. I mean, the, the Guardian pursues left-wing agendas on its opinion pages, but not on its news reports. Uh, okay, well, well, we'll agree to disagree then. But I think the BBC... Do you read The Guardian? Can, um, I, what I've read of it would mean that I have no faith in its... Uh, so in its you don't then? I don't read it. No. I don't take uh, well, it Well, you should day, probably no. have said so before you sat in judgment on what's in it every day. I, I read all well, the papers I've every read, day. I've read enough of it to know... So what was, your, what was the most read. egregious example of its left-wing bias then when you did read it? Um, it would pull this... this uh, discussion into a whole area which you probably don't want no, to No, I really do. I can't wait. Okay. What was the most egregious okay, example? In which, in which case, the, the, and, and I'll link it back to the BBC. If you would. My, speci my special interest, if you like, for, for a number of reasons, is Israel-Palestine. Right. Now, I don't believe that the Guardian prints op-eds or content which are fair and impartial as regards that subject. For example? No, neither and, do and I And we're supposed to be talking about the news coverage, either. remember? Not, not the op-eds. I said, of course, they pursue an agenda in their op-eds because that's what op stands for. It stands for opinion. But in their news coverage, the, the examples of egregious bias from when you did read it. Well, again, as I'm saying, the, the op-ed, I, I don't think... No, but op stands for opinion. ...would consistently bring op, in... Op stands for opinion. align with its core values. Opinion. So in the news pages, where is the egregious bias that, 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 you, that you find? I feel when that they... It. Well, I, I will not, because I can't, give you a specific answer. Right, I, I, I knew that, and you knew that. We could probably have saved the last three or four I've minutes. So back I've to the impartiality of the... Back to the stop talking over me when I'm talking over you. Let's now ignore The Guardian and The Daily Mail and, and t talk to me about why the Martin Bashir story proves some sort of partiality or impartiality point with regard to the corporation. Well, I don't think it proves it as such, but I think it brings into question, is the BBC partial or impartial? How, how, how does it? Well, in this particular case, yeah. there was no there was no proper system of checks and balances that stopped Martin Bashir from presenting an agenda that, which you know, it may well be the case. What that, was his agenda? Uh, Princess Diana. That Princess Diana was was a horribly wronged woman, which I personally believe she was, uh, who had a, a lot to say about her, her relationship with the royal family, which she was entitled to do. Right. But I think to manufacture that uh, opinion. So, so because opinion, because Martin Bashir faked some bank statements nearly 30 years ago, that calls the impartiality of the BBC into question? Absolutely. No, for, I just but wanted I to be clear that I understood you. Yeah, yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, if you give someone a platform... That's objectively speak, hilarious. If you give someone a platform to speak, then yes. they're entitled to speak. If you coerce that person into taking a more extreme well, no position... No one coerced as, her. As, as, 
Well, that's what Prince Harry has said. That's what Prince William has she said. She wasn't coerced. No, nobody well, she coerced her. She was I misled. She was mentally coerced into a different state of mind. And that is evidence that the BBC the... is impartial. Is it's partial, I beg your pardon. It's, it's one example. Okay. If you've, got, if you've got a reporter that you hold out to be one of your own, who yeah. is manufacturing and corrupting evidence to create a, a mindset in someone and they then give an opinion based on that mindset... How no, but that's partial? not what happened. Well, that, as I say, that seemed, in my in my simplistic opinion, well, no, don't, 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 there's nothing Harry simplistic. Of, there's nothing simplistic about it. It's just for me. And and listen, perfectly possible that that you're quite right that Martin Bashir faking a couple of bank statements calls the impartiality of the entire BBC into question. But I, I'd just like you to join the dots if you could a little more clearly. Martin Bashir is a wrong one who's been found out largely as a result of BBC investigations. Investigations undertaken because the Daily Mail wouldn't leave them alone. Um, what does that tell you about any other... Well, name the issue that you think this plays into, where, where it also calls the impartiality of the BBC into question. Well, I mean, before I do that, or in, in, instead of doing that, let me say... Let's no, say I'd this, really like you to, because I'm out of time, and everyone's going to think I've cut you off, but I, I want to give you a chance to tell... What are the other issues that Martin Bashir, faking bank statements, adds to the suspicion that the BBC is biased? All right, let's say the guy over the road from you is a perfectly nice guy... I'd rather just talk friends, about you, if I may. So, so Martin Bashir got someone to knock up some dodgy bank statements 20-odd yep. year, years ago, yep. and that proves, or that suggests, the BBC is biased in what other areas, Danny? In all sorts of areas. Yeah, for example? Because because what the BBC no? is doing, what Does the BBC one? is doing is creating a framework for an opinion that would not have okay, been Okay, so, so Martin Bashir faked, been... faked a couple of bank statements nearly 30 years ago, and that calls into question their impartiality in what other fields, Danny? What other areas? In foreign affairs, in politics. Yeah, go on. Uh, I think, I think the, so you the think BBC because Martin is, is Bashir probably... faked a couple of bank statements nearly 30 years ago, we should be very, very suspicious of the BBC's foreign affairs reporting? I think so. I think it's. Would it be areas. fair to say that you were very, very unhappy with the BBC's foreign air, uh, affairs reporting long before Martin Bashir um, uh, and this particular story came to light? 100%. Yeah, funny 100. that, isn't it? Because it's chicken and egg. Here we are absolute proof of what I already believed. Is that a fair representation of your position? Martin Bashir's behaviour absolutely proves what I already believed about areas of the BBC that Martin Bashir has never even visited. Is that a fair summation of it, your view? It calls into question the checks and balances and yeah. impartiality. So, so, the so Martin Bashir's behaviour, Martin Bashir's behaviour nearly 30 years ago proves what you already knew to be true about parts of the BBC he never even visited. Right or wrong? It doesn't it doesn't prove it per se. But no, but it, certainly it adds really certainly it adds weight. Opinion. It adds weight to the idea that, that the BBC is biased in areas that Martin Bashir never even visited because of what he did with some bank statements nearly thirty years ago. I, I'm, I'm call, ge genuinely the, honest. Calls, Hand on heart, I'm so grateful to you. Into question. Absolutely, it, it does. Into, and it, and in the areas in the areas that you were already unhappy and suspicious about specifically. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. Graham's in Leeds. Graham, what do you think? Uh, good morning, James. Hello. Graham. Um, a couple of points to make. Um, with regard to Monday, I think it's unbelievable that we're actually going to be doing what we're going to be doing. Um, none of it makes any sense whatsoever. Well, did you hear Alex? Did you hear Alex up in Cumbria? So the, I did. The, the idea is, the plan is, that everybody who hasn't been vaccinated, or pretty much everybody gets it, and therefore the antibodies build up a resistance and we achieve herd immunity through a combination of vaccination for half of the population and possibly infection for the other half. Un understood. Including um, all that, our that, children. That, that's correct. That, that was what leading on to one of the other points regarding the slowing down of the vaccine take-up. Hmm. Um, I myself am vaccine hesitant. I'm not, I'm not jabbed at all. Um, in okay. the present, I've, followed ev I've followed every other rule up until this point, right. but I have, I've decided to wait and see regarding the vaccine. And oh, will you promise me you'll listen to the podcast, listen to full disclosure? I, 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 I do. I mean, promise, promise, listen I, I, to the I women that, that invented it and have put it into circulation, because it will. I think it will address some of your concerns. I, I promise you. Thank I you. mean, just, just with regard to the vaccine, just uh, yesterday or the day before, the Australian Chief Medical Officer has said that the risks 
actually outweigh the benefits with the vaccine. No, they haven't. Now, I know that's a very controversial point. They haven't. But that, that's not me that they no, have. I, do you know, I haven't, it's, it's I, haven't even, I haven't even checked, but there's no earthly way the Australian Chief Medical Officer has said, uh, as, as explicitly as you describe it, that the um, vaccine has a greater risk than the virus. It just hasn't happened. No, than, than the benefits to the vaccine. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't happened. All, I'm well, not even checking. All one side. All right. All that- Let's find out whether June Mummery still does. Um, how do you feel listening back to that, June? Welcome, by the way. Hi, James. Yeah, quite funny, really. I've calmed down a lot. Yeah, you know, I sell fish for a living. And, um, and that's what I do. Yeah, um, yeah, I listen to it. And, um, yeah, we have been sold out by um, our Prime Minister, oh, and I am deeply on. upset. That was me talking then, and I, I'm, I think you probably yeah. realise I'm not a big fan of Boris Johnson's. I told yeah, he you, did. Yeah, he sold us out. No, yes, but I told, Boris I, has sold us out. No, I told you what was going to happen in that call from exactly three years ago almost to the day. No, 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 James, you didn't tell us what happened. We've, you know, I'm delighted that we've left the EU. I'm okay. delighted with that. It's well, the deal, James. It's oh. the deal that our government got for the fishing industry and the gentleman you just had on i couldn't really hear i got cut Let's off just, him a don't, don't of worry times. don't worry about him i'm just but he, he, hang okay. on that's a big no, deal what i'm going again. to say about him all right he owns he, the kakella is a dutch vessel yes uh, he, he had nothing to, he had nothing to do with the kakella but, but the kakella is a flagship yes it is a british british registered but owned by the dutch yes but the, the fellow who was just on was just a member of the public from norway june well, yeah, he's probably working for, 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 for in that, he's working in Norway and he's, he's talking about that side of things it's because they, that doesn't interfere with his life here. Brexit okay, has taken does... back full control, James, was about rebuilding right. an industry. So why are none of the ships in Hull, why are none of the trawlers in Hull allowed into Norwegian because... waters then at the moment? Because of the, of the deal that our government got. So it's what, deal, what, what, when James, you listen if back... If we'd have taken back... Uh, yes. if listen, James. If I we'd am. Have taken I'm hanging on your every control, syllable. Yes. Yeah, I've got to go in a meeting in a minute, so I'm oh, rushing no. it through. Sorry. Oh, what a shame. I'm so sorry. Right. Okay. Yeah, but um, uh, what I'm trying to say is, if we'd have taken back full control of our waters and the resource, we would be in a, in, in a completely different position now. Yes, but you we heard me three control. years ago explaining to you why that was impossible. So... Who's been Why proved right? You, you, well, you're, that wasn't you're, impossible at all. Of course it was. It wasn't was. impossible. Well, no, be- it was not. Because the quotas were always going to be linked to the trade agreement. There, there, there's a quid pro quo. So in return for fishing no, in... No, war- no, no, James. We've taken it back. Quotas it doesn't, isn't oh. owned by anybody. No. It's, people have the entitlement to use it. It's no yes. different to, to the, to the, to the so, milk quota. Our government can take that back when they want. Right. What I'm saying is, it's the deal that Boris got. Our government was unprepared. I said it all along. You didn't. No, well, well, let's play the tape well again. Done. Let's play the but, tape again, no, no, June. Oh, because, on, no, because, on. you know, I, my listeners are... are, are no, the no, let's listen to you saying that, that it was going to be a really bad deal all along then. Go on. So, June, when, when's the bit when you told, for example, because you ended up, I think, as an MEP with the Brexit party, w- when was the bit when you told voters that the deal was that you knew the deal was going to be rubbish? And was that before or after Farage decided to stand down candidates in friendly constituencies? Oh, really? you, James, I'm not going to go... You've got a thing about Nigel, haven't you? You really have well, got... Only, only one of us has got him in the I Twitter re- Twitter listen, banner on our listen. Twitter pages. Yeah, well, you, you've repeated that, that, that piece from me going back years ago. Yes. Why, why can't you now... Let's not talk about me. I didn't make any promises no, to no, voters. No, 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 but you... When, when did you tell them? Then? When did you tell them that it was going to be a really bad go. deal? When did you tell them? Because you just I told my listeners that. But, uh, Nick, can I get a word? Listen, I didn't realise... Right, please, may I just say something? I thought our Prime Minister, our government, was going to take back... We were promised that they would take back full control of our waters and the resource. If they had done that, James, we would be in a very different position. But I explained to you in 2018 why that was impossible. James, please let me just finish. Well, okay, but you're not making any sense, Jim. Oh, no, because you won't let me get this across. All right, so if only we just believed more. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do, you want, what do you want to talk about? The, 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 the fact that what we should have been, if we had taken back control, what part of this conversation can I get over? If we'd have taken back full control of our resource and the fish, we would be in a completely different position. And who would we be because selling we it to? Be, we'd be 
pro- well, the biggest problem we have in our country, James, is that we, we should be selling it to our super in our, in our supermarkets instead of all the farm fish that they sell. You know, bass from Vietnam. Mm. You know, prawns from st- dikes in Thailand. Yes. You know, that's that's something the government and, and, has. And was five Brexit years ever going to make any of that better? I mean, Norway sell their fish to 149 different countries. Giant so fish why, is not a problem. Where will we sell ours? The problem then? is. Pardon? Where will we sell we'll ours? We'll sell it to France. We'll sell it to Holland. They'll you know, need it. You, They've got big. If you know what the problem James, is there. Let finish, no, June, please, no, no, I will let, let you finish, finish, but you can't sell it if you're not allowed to James, catch it. Well, we, we're talking about the deal. If we're, I'm, I'm going back to what we, what should have happened, what we were promised. This is a big. This is a big deal. You know, at the moment, Boris is the, Boris has lied about wallpapers and this different things, but he lied to us. June, you made the promises so to the British people. No, I didn't make... I, yes, you did. did you promise? stood for office in Nigel's party. What did we promise? You promised what that we'd we take back control. People said that's impossible. You said no, it isn't, and here we are. Well, it isn't. It was not impossible. It was. But our government are weak and spineless and did not take back full control. If we'd have taken back and had the fish, we'd have sold it to France and Holland. Got you can't do that factory. without a trade people agreement. Well, what, so they've got huge factories, James, and employees to pay. Where would they have got the fish from? Us. Well, it's standard uh, business sense, James. Don't try and make it look... Try, don't try and twist it. That I'm is not twisting it is. anything. We, we fish, can't sell fish that we're not allowed it. to catch. We're not allowed to catch... Well, listen, what I'm trying to say is we're, we're quite happy oh, as, a, as, as, a, as a coastal... Uh, as an island of right. catching our own fish in our waters and selling it. Yes, We're but, happy but, in but, our but I explained to you three years ago that the massive majority of the fish that we sold we were catching in other waters because we don't like to eat majority. the oily fish. The reason we weren't in, catching it in uh, our waters is because we haven't, we, we weren't allowed to catch our, our fish. And now we're what not even allowed case? to fish in the waters that we were allowed to fish in before, which is the whole point of today's story from Hull, isn't it, June? The UK fisheries are well, lobbying. The they're lobbying Keller the government that you. That, that's, don't we shout. We want rid of that. We please want don't rid shout. Of the Keir Keller. Please I'm don't. Not please don't Sorry, shout. I've got an answer in. The government. What the I'm, government are being lobbied. The Keir to, Keller is a flagship. It's a Dutch vessel. It's yes, British registered <sighs> and owned by the UK, James. Yes, please. Wh- which means that it is, is about, subject to UK rather than EU. Legislation. Let me just hear you making a little promise before the election. Let's just go back in time again, June, if, 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 if you'll allow. We are taking back full control of our waters and the resource. It's as simple as that. See, that's a promise. Who broke it? But our government broke it, But James. you made it. What do you mean I made a promise? Well, I'll remind you, you again. Not, Have another listen. We are listen. taking back full control of our waters and the resource. It's as simple as that. What, we wanted to do. And what do you say to people who voted for you? Meetings. What do you say to people who voted for you? Are you going to say sorry? Well, sorry, why? I didn't do the deal. Hang on, this is the promise you made. We are taking back full control of our waters and the resource. It's as simple as that. It wasn't simple, was it? Simple. Didn't the happen, did it? Made it difficult. It's the most simplest thing that you could do. He, I sat in an office in Lowestoft with Boris, and he promised me we would take back full control of our waters. That is what he told me. And I and told you that that was impossible in March of 2018. I, I told you that was impossible in March of 2018, well, no, and you got James, and you got listen, cross you got cross about the facts and figures, you. didn't you? So anyway, Brexit before you go, I don't want to keep you from your meeting. On a scale of one to ten, how well is Brexit going for the fishing industry? industry total. A scale of one to ten. I don't know really, James. I mean, I'm still working on it daily, but really, oh, no, I mean... But at the moment, scale of one to ten. Eight. Badly. So, it's bad. It's so bad for us at on, the moment. On, with ten, I mean, with ten, like with ten, to... ten is the worst it could possibly be, it's currently an eight. You know I have to put ten pounds in a tin for charity every time I say I told you so in the context of Brexit, June. Well, yeah, but that's not quite right, is it? You've got the... You've talked Keith, with that. get the tin. June Mummery... I told you so.